karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la moja lesson 11 na katika lesson 11 tutaona maana na matumizi ya maneno manne ambayo ni this, that, these na those na tuna vipengele vinne ambapo kipengele cha kwanza ni kipengele A ambacho kitaangalia this na that katika hali ya kawaida kipengele B kitaangalia these na those katika hali ya kawaida kipengele C kitaangalia this na that kwa upande wa kuuliza na kujibu swali na kipengele D kitaangalia these na those kwa upande wa kuuliza na kujibu swali na kupitia mifano tutakuwa tunaona maana ya kila neno this that these na those hatua kwa hatua jambo la msingi ni kuwa makini kufuatilia vile ambavyo ya maneno yanatumika katika sentensi ili uweze kuyatumia hata katika masomo yale kumi ambayo tayari yamepita kwa hiyo baada ya kuona namna ambayo ambavyo ya maneno yanatumika utaweza kwenda katika sentensi za masomo yaliyopita na kuweza kuyatumia haya au kutumia vipande vya sentensi au hata misamiati mingine utakayopata hapa ili uweze kuendelea kuboresha kiingereza chako na uweze ku kuzidi kupata namna pana ya kujieleza katika vitu mbalimbali na mazingira tofauti tofauti. Tuangalie mfano wa kwanza katika kipengele A ambao ni huu hapa. This is a YouTube channel. This is a YouTube channel. Hapo kitu cha msingi cha kwanza cha kuzingatia ni hili neno this. Neno this linamaanisha hiki, hii, hili huyu hizo zote ni maana za this kwa Kiswahili kwa hiyo kitu kimoja ambacho kinaweza kuwa hiki au hii au hili au huyu kama ni mtu au ni mnyama utatumia neno this kwa upande wa Kiingereza lakini pia ukiongeza neno is inakuwa huyu ni hiki ni hili ni hii ni kwa hiyo mahali ambapo utahitaji kutumia kitu kama hicho kutoka kwenye Kiswahili kwenda kwenye Kiingereza kwa utashika kwamba kutoka huyu ni hiki ni hili ni hii ni kwa Kiingereza ni this is this is na tukiendelea na haya maneno ya mbele ni a YouTube channel this is a YouTube channel hii ni channel ya YouTube lakini kama ungekuwa unataka kusema hii ni barua ungesema this is a letter Ungetaka kusema hii ni nyumba, ungesema this is a house. Ungetaka kusema huyu ni mvulana, ungesema this is a boy. Na kadhalika, kwa jambo la msingi ni kupata kipande cha msingi ambacho ni this is kisha maelezo ya mbele uta, utaendelea kufanyia mazoezi kupitia sentence tofauti tofauti au kulingana na mahitaji yako binafsi. Twende kwa upande wa example 2, mfano wa pili. This channel is so nice hasa hapa tunaona tumetoka kwenye this is tumeenda kwenye this ikiunganishia jina ambapo tunapata this channel kwa hapa haitakuwa hii ni baada yake itakuwa channel hii this channel this channel is ni so nice inamaanisha nzuri sana hapa nice pia ongeza kutumia good ukasema this channel is so good kwa hiyo this channel ni channel hii na hapa kwenye neno channel kama utakuwa makini sasa ni kwamba unaweza kubadilisha channel ukaweka vitu vingine tofauti tofauti. Kwa mfano ukasema huyu msichana ni mrembo. Kwa kusema hivi this girl is beautiful. This girl is beautiful. Ambapo inamaanisha msichana huyu ni mrembo au ni mzuri lakini kwa upande wa muonekano. Mfano mwingine ni huu hapa watatu example 3 this is my friend this is my friend inamaanisha huyu ni rafiki yangu this is my friend kwa hiyo hapa kwenye my friend unaweza kubadilisha na kuweka vitu tofauti tofauti my friend ukasema labda this is my mother huyu ni mama yangu this is my teacher huyu ni mwalimu wangu. Mazoezi binafsi ndio atakayo kusaidia kuweza kugundua vitu vingi ambavyo unaweza kavisemea kwa kutumia sentensi ya tatu. Twende kwenye example 4, mfano wa 4. Example 4. I know that man very well. I know kama utakumbuka inamaanisha ninajua. That man huyo mwanamume 
au huyo mwanaume that man au yule mwanaume that man kwa hapa kitu cha kuzingatia ni hili neno that tumekwisha kuona this inamaanisha hiki hili hii au huyu lakini that inakuwa kinyume chake ile kile lile yule sasa mwanaume tutasema yule i know that man very well inamaanisha ninamjua yule mwanaume vizuri sana lakini kwa mfano ingekuwa ninaijua ile biashara ungesema i know that business i know that business ungetoa hapa man ukaweka business kwa hiyo hii inakuonyesha kwamba kwa kitu chochote utakachotaka kukisemea katika mazingira kama haya unatoa tu hili neno man kwa mfano huu tulionao unaweka kitu chochote utakachotaka kusema ninamjua yule mtu i know that person ninamjua yule mwalimu i know that teacher na kadhalika twende example 5 mfano wa tano i don't want that book i want this one twende taratibu kama utakumbuka umekuwa ukifuatilia kwa makini ni kwamba i don't want inamaanisha sitaki i don't want sitaki na kupitia that man tunajua kwamba that book itakuwa kile kitabu au hicho kitabu i don't want that book sitaki kile kitabu au sitaki hicho kitabu i want i want nayo utakumbuka inamaanisha ninataka i want this ambayo inamaanisha ninataka hiki au ninataka ya yeah, ninataka hiki kwa sababu ni kitabu i want this ninataka hiki i don't want that book i want this sitaki kile au hicho kitabu ninataka hiki lakini pia hata ukiongeza hii one inabaki maana ile ile i want this one i want this one inabaki vile vile kwamba ninataka hiki i don't want that book i want this au i don't want that book i want this one sitaki hicho au kile kitabu ninataka hiki twende example ya mwisho kwa kipengele a ambayo ni example 6 That's not my fault. That's not my fault. That's inatokana na muungano wa maneno mawili ambayo ni that pamoja na is. Kwa hiyo badala ya kusema that's not my fault, ungeweza kusema that is not my fault. That is not my fault. Ambayo inamaanisha hilo si kosa langu. Hilo si kosa langu. My fault kosa langu. That is not my fault. That's not my fault. That is not my fault. How that's not my fault. Lakini pia hapa kwenye my unaweza kubadilisha ukasema your that's not your fault ambayo inamaanisha hilo si kosa lako. Twende kwenye kipengele B. Kipengele B tutaangalia tena maneno ma, mengine mawili yaliyobaki. Tukianza na example one. Kuna these are my friends these are my friends hasa utakumbuka tulikuwa na this inayomaanisha hiki these inamaanisha hivi manake these ni wingi wa this inatofautiana kidogo kwamba ile inaishia s inaishia z this these 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 tulikuwa tuna this is hapa tuna these are this is these are utakumbuka this is kwa pamoja ilikuwa inamaanisha hiki ni hii ni huyu ni hili ni sasa these are kwa itakuwa wengi wake hawa ni hizi ni hivi ni na kadhalika my friends my friends inamaanisha marafiki zangu kwa hiyo kwa pamoja these are my friends inamaanisha hawa ni marafiki zangu these are my friends na kama tungetoa my friends tukaweka vitu vingine kwa mfano biashara tungepata sentence kama these are my businesses hizi ni biashara zangu kwa kuna hawa ni marafiki zangu kwa kutumia these are 
hizi ni biashara zangu kwa kutumia these are kwa kwa Kiswahili kuna mabadiliko lakini kwa Kiingereza inabaki pale pale these are hawa ni hivi ni hizi ni haya ni kwa mfano haya ni makosa yangu these are my faults these are my faults haya ni makosa yangu au kwa mfano tutasema hawa ni watu wangu these are my people these are my people na kadhalika kwa unaweza kutoa pia my ukaweka your ukapata sentence tofauti tofauti kulingana na mahitaji yako twende kwenye example 2 those people are so kind those people are so kind tulikuwa na that na hili neno those ni wingi wa that kwa that ilikuwa na maanisha ile kile lile yule those itamaanisha wale yale zile vile those people watu wale au wale watu those people are ni so kind so kind ina maanisha enye huruma sana au karimu sana kwa hiyo those people are so kind ina maanisha wale watu au watu wale ni wa karimu sana au ni watu wenye huruma sana those people are so kind wale ni watu au watu wale ni wenye huruma sana au watu wale wana huruma sana au ni wa karimu sana those people are so kind number three. i don't know these kids at all i don't know these kids at all i don't know utakumbuka kwamba na maanisha sijui these kids inakuwa watoto hawa kwa kama ambavyo tuko naona that alafu naweka jina la kitu inakuwa ba kitu hiki mtu huyu hapa tuna these kids watoto hawa watoto hawa these kids au hawa watoto i don't know these kids siwajui hawa watoto au siwajui watoto hawa at all kabisa au hata kidogo i don't know these kids at all siwajui hawa watoto au siwajui watoto hawa hata kidogo au siwajui watoto hawa kabisa kwa kwenye kids unaweza kubadilisha kaka vitu tofauti tofauti kulingana na mahitaji yako jambo la msingi ni kuzishika tu hizi na kuzielewa kwamba kumbe nikitaka kuoanisha these na kitu fulani kwa Kiswahili na kuwa ina maana hii. Twende kwenye example ya nne, example 4. What do you want to tell those women? What do you want? Peke yake utakumbuka ina maanisha unataka nini? What do you want to tell kwa mfano what do you want to tell me what do you want to tell me na maanisha unataka kuniambia nini mimi ambao hata ukisema tu unataka kuniambia nini itakuwa inatosha what do you want to tell those women sasa so, so, those women ina maanisha hao wanawake au wale wanawake what do you want to tell those women unataka kuambia nini hao wanawake au unataka kuambia nini wale wanawake Twende kwenye kipengele kinachofuata ambacho ni kipengele C na kipengele hiki ni maswali na majibu kwa kutumia that na this. Unakumbuka tuko tuna this alafu nafuata is. This is. Kwenye swali is inatangulia this inafuata. Kwa badala kuwa na this is tunakuwa na is this kisha mwisho kuna kuwa na alama ya kuuliza is this. Humo katikati maelezo yataendana na uhitaji wa wakati au mahali husika wa sentensi unayoitengeneza kwa sentensi yetu nzima inakuwa is this a big problem is this a big problem inamaanisha je hili ni tatizo kubwa problem ni tatizo big kubwa a big problem manake tatizo kubwa ambalo ni moja is this a big problem hili ni tatizo kubwa au je hili ni tatizo kubwa na this unaweza kaitoa kaweka that 
Kwa sababu this inenda na is, that inenda na is. Kwa ungeza kusema pia is that a big problem? Je, hilo ni tatizo kubwa au je, lile ni tatizo kubwa? Majibu kama ambavyo ingekuwa kwa, kwa Kiswahili hapa tunategemea atakuwa na majibu ya ndio au hapana. Kwa jibu la kwanza linakuwa hivi. Yes. This is a big problem. Yes, this is a big problem. Ndiyo hili ni tatizo kubwa. Jibu lingine no. This is not a big problem. No, this is not a big problem. Hapana, hili si tatizo kubwa. Kwa hiyo this inakanushwa kwa kutumia not kama tulivyoona eh, I am inakanushwa kwa kutumia not inakuwa I am not. Kwa hiyo this is inakanushwa kwa not inakuwa this is not. This is not a big problem. No, this is not a big problem. Hapana, hili si tatizo kubwa. Twende kwenye swali la pili. Question number two is that your fault? Is that your fault? Ambe na manisha J, hilo ni kosa lako? Au hilo ni kosa lako? Is that your fault? Ambapo that pia ingeza kuwa sasana this. Kama ungetaka kumanisha hili. Is this your fault? Inge manisha J, hili ni kosa lako? Ila that ina manisha J, hilo ni kosa lako? Au J, hilo ni kosa lako? Lile ni kosa lako? Is that your fault? Majibu? Yes. That's my fault. Utakumbuka that sina manisha that is. Ndiyo sabu kwenye swali kumaona is that. Kusabu is imetoka hapa mbapo kuna mkato. Hawa apostrofe, mkato wa juu na s. That's. Manake ni that is. Is that your fault? Yes. That's my fault. Ndiyo hilo ni kosa lango. Ndiyo lile ni kosa lango. No. No. That's not my fault. No, that's not my fault. Hapana, hilo siko salangu. Au hapana, lile siko salangu. No, that's not my fault. Tuende kwa number three. Question number three. Question number three. Is that woman your wife? Is that woman your wife? Ino manisha je huyo mwanamke au je yule mwanamke ni mkeo au ni mke wako. Is that woman your wife? Huyo mwanamke ni mke wako. Lakini kama ingekua ni mataka kuuliza huyo mwanaume ni mme wako. Ongesema is that man your husband? Is that man your husband? Kwa mwona ni mabadiliko tu ya vipengele fulano lakini is that inabaki vile vile. Hajalishi kitu ambacho kitakuwa ukumbele. Na majibu hapa ni yes. That woman is my wife. Ndiyo huyo mwanamke au ndiyo yule mwanamke ni mke wangu. Yes, that woman is my wife. No, that woman is not my wife. No, that woman is not my wife. Hapana, huyo mwanamke si mke wangu. Na utaona kwamba hapa haikuwa that, imekuwa that, kwa sababu woman inatangulia is. Kwa hiyo hakuna namna ya kuunganisha ya that na is. Kwa sababu woman ndio inakuja baada ya that. Hila ingekua nafata is. Tungesema, that your wife, or that my wife, na kathalika. Hila tunasema huyo mwanamke, siyo huyo ni. Tunasema huyo mwanamke kwa hiyo ni that woman. Huyo ni ndio inakuwa that is ambayo ingekuwa that. Twende swali la nne. Question number four. Question number four. Do you know anything about this business? Do you know anything about this business? Ina manisha unajua kitu chochote kuhusu. Hii biyashara, do you know anything, peki ya kina manisha unajua kitu chochote, about kuhusu this business biyashara hii, au hii biyashara. Do you know anything about this business? Majibu, yes, I know something about this business. Yes, I know something about this 
this business na maanaisha ndio ninajua kitu fulani kuhusu hii biashara yes i know something about this business au ungeza kama utakumbuka maneno haya many things ambayo inamaanisha vitu vingi ungesema yes i know many things about this business kama utakumbuka kila kitu hapa kwenye everything ungeza kuitoa na ku, hapa kwenye something ungeza kuitoa na kuweka everything ambayo inamaanisha kila kitu yes i know everything about this business ndio ninajua kila kitu kuhusu hii biashara na jibu la pili au second answer jibu la pili no i don't know anything about this business no i don't know anything about this business hapana sijui kitu chochote kuhusu hii biashara no i don't know anything about this business au unaweza kusema pia sijui biashara kabisa no i don't know this business at all no i don't know this business at all ambayo ingemaanisha hapana sijui biashara kabisa au sijui biashara hata kidogo na Twende kwa kipengele D ambacho ni maswali na majibu kwa kutumia these na those. Na tuangalie question number one. swali la kwanza. Are these doctors ready to help me today? Are these doctors ready to help me today? Utakumbuka these are ilikuwa na maanisha hawa ni au hizi ni au hivi ni au haya ni lakini kwa sababu hapa tunazungumzia doctors ambao ni madaktari itakuwa ni hawa lakini tulikuwa na these are swali so, inakuwa are these kama vile ambavyo kwenye that is na this is imekuwa is that na is this ndivyo ambavyo inakuwa kwa these these na those kwamba are itatangulia these itafuata au those itafuata Are these doctors ready to help me today? J. Hawa madaktari wako tayari kunisaidia mimi leo? Are these doctors ready to help me today? Majibu. Yes. These doctors are ready to help you today. Yes, these doctors are ready to help you today. Ina maanisha ndio hawa madaktari wako tayari kukusaidia wewe leo. Au hata kusema ndio hawa madaktari wako tayari kukusaidia leo inatosha. Jibu lingine za kuwa no no these doctors are not ready to help you today. No these doctors are not ready to help you today. No these doctors are not ready to help you today na maanisha hapana hawa madaktari hawako tayari kukusaidia wewe leo twende sentence ambayo ni ya pili na ya mwisho kwa somo hili ambayo inatoka katika kipengele D ambacho kinahusu maswali na majibu ya these na those what do you want to teach those kids What do you want to teach those kids? Inamaanisha unataka kuwafundisha nini hao watoto? What do you want to teach those kids? Unataka kuwafundisha nini hao watoto? Mambapo hapa haitakuwa na ndio au hapana kwa sababu utataja tu kile unachotaka kuwafundisha au kama hutaki utasema sitaki kuwafundisha kitu chochote. Jibu la kwanza, I want to teach them how to read and write. I want to teach them, he them inamaanisha wao. Ninataka kuwafundisha wao. I want to teach them how to how to inamaanisha namna ya au jinsi ya I want to teach them how to read and write Nataka kuwafundisha namna au jinsi ya kusoma na kuandika Japo kwa, kwa kawaida Kiswahili watu sema jinsi ya au namna ya tunasema tunataka kuwafundisha kusoma na kuandika lakini kwa Kiingereza utaizingatie utaizingatia tu hapo how to I want to teach them how to read and write nataka kuwafundisha namna ya kusoma na kuandika au kama ungekuwa unataka kuwafundisha Kiingereza ungesema I want to teach them English I want to teach them mathematics kama unataka kuwafundisha hisabati au I want to teach them science nataka kuwafundisha science na kadhalika kwa upande wa jibu lingine ingeza kuwa 
I don't want to teach them anything. I don't want to teach them anything. Ina manisha sitaki kwa fundisha kitu chochote. I don't want to teach them anything. Jambo la msingi ni ule umakini kwamba haya maneno yametumikaje hapa yanaleta maana gani kwa Kiswahili? Fanya mazoezi binafsi ya kuyatumia kadri unavyoweza katika sentensi nyingine au katika masomo mengine ambayo umekwisha kuyaona hapa au katika namna ambayo utaijua wewe ya kuweza kukusaidia kuyaelewa vizuri katika matumizi ya yatakayokufaa ya au ambayo unayahitaji siku kwa siku katika shughuli zako au katika mambo yako binafsi. Baada ya hapo nitasoma sentensi zote mara moja tu kwa kila sentensi na kwa Kiingereza tu ili kukusaidia kuona kama unaweza ukaisikia tu sentensi kwa Kiingereza na kukumbuka kile inachomaanisha kwa Kiswahili. Number 1 Anza na A Number 1 This is a YouTube channel. 2 This channel is so nice. 3 This is my friend. 4 I know that man very well. Five. I don't want that book. I want this one. Six. That's not my fault. B. Number one. These are my friends. Two. Those people are so kind. Three. I don't know these kids at all. Four. Why do you want to tell those women? C. Question number one. Is this a big problem? Yes, this is a big problem. No, this is not a big problem. Question number two. Is that your fault? Yes, that's my fault. No, that's not my fault. Question number three. Is that woman your wife? Yes, that woman is my wife. No, that woman is not my wife. Question number four. Do you know anything about this business? Yes, I know something about this business. No, I don't know anything about this business. D. Question number one. Are these doctors ready to help me today? Yes, these doctors are ready to help you today. No, these doctors are not ready to help you today. Question number two. Why do you want to teach those kids? I want to teach them how to read and write. I don't want to teach them anything. Hello, karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la 12, lesson 12. Na katika somo hili tutaona maana na matumizi ya maneno saba ambayo ni my, your, his, her, its, our na their. Na tutaona maana ya kila neno na namna linavyotumika kupitia mifano ambayo tunayo. Tuna jumla ya mifano tisa ambayo itatusaidia kuona maana na matumizi ya haya maneno. Na baada ya kuwa umeshajifunza hapa, ni jukumu lako sasa kufanyia mazoezi ili uelewe haya maneno kwa upana. Kupitia masomo ambayo tunayo hapa kwenye channel na pia kupitia vitu mbalimbali ambavyo wewe mwenyewe binafsi unatumia kujifunza iwe labda ni kwa kusikiliza, iwe ni kwa kusoma. Popote utakapokutana na haya maneno kama utakuwa makini kuyasikiliza hapa, basi yatakusumbua tena kujua na maanisha nini hapo utakapokuwa umeyakuta. Na tuanze na mfano wa kwanza tulionao katika somo hili. Mfano wetu wa kwanza ni hapa. This is my favorite favorite song. This is my favorite song. Inayomaanisha huu ni wimbo ambao ninaupenda sana au unaweza kusema huu ni wimbo wangu kipenzi. Au huu ni wimbo wangu kipenzi sana. Maana huu ni wimbo ninaupenda sana ikiwa na maanisha favorite na maanisha kuliko vitu vingine vyovyote manake miongoni mwa nyimbo unazozipenda huu ndio wimbo ambao unaupenda kuliko zile nyimbo zote favorite song lakini hapa kitu cha msingi cha kuzingatia katika hii sentence ni my my ina maanisha yangu langu changu zangu vyangu yangu Manake katika umoja au wingi wa kile kitu ambacho kinakuelekea wewe ni chako. Hili neno my litatumika kwa mfano my family familia yangu, my kids watoto wangu, my friend rafiki yangu. Kwa hiyo my inacheza katika maeneo yote yanayoelekeana na hayo maneno ya Kiswahili niliyosema. 
kwa sababu ni wimbo my favorite song wimbo wangu kipenzi sana au wimbo wangu ninaopenda sana Twende namba mbili, example 2 I don't know your name I don't know utakumbuka na maanisha sijui your name jina lako your name jina lako lakini your inamaanisha yako chako lako zako vyako yako na pia your inasimamia kwa wingi ambayo inaweza kumaanisha yenu chenu lenu vienu zenu kwa mfano ingekuwa ni sijui majina yenu ingekuwa i don't know your names i don't know your names sijui majina yenu sijui don't know your name kwa hiyo yako your yenu your kwa hiyo hii ni kwa upande wa umoja na wingi wa wewe au nyinyi kwa upande wa yenu zenu na vitu vinavyoelekeana na hivyo example 3 i need his address i need utakumbuka inamaanisha na hitaji his address inamaanisha anwani yake his address his ni yake lakini wa kiume lakini his pia itasimama kwa maeneo kama lake chake vyake zake na kadhalika kwa vitu vyote vitakavyokuwa vinamwelekea wa kiume kwa upande huu wa umiliki utatumia his his car gari lake his family familia yake his kids watoto wake lakini huyu anayezungumziwa ni wa kiume his i need his address ninahitaji anwani yake number 4 I live in her house. I live in her house. I live in her house. Ineo manisha ninaishi kwenye nyumba yake. Au ninaishi ndani ya nyumba yake. Lakini hapo mwona his inasimamia wa kiume. Sasa her inasimamia wa kike. Kwa hiyo vile vile kama ilivyo kuwa kwa his. Her itamanisha yake, lake, chake, vyake zake yake wa kike his wa kiume her wa kike her mother mama yake lakini huyu anayezungumziwa ni wa kike kwa mama yake mtu fulani wa kike her friend rafiki yake rafiki wa nani wa mtu fulani wa kike ambaye atakumtaja jina i live in her house ninaishi kwenye nyumba yake ninaishi kwenye nyumba ya mtu fulani wa kike number 5 don't touch its tail don't touch its tail touch its head don't touch its tail touch its head inamaanisha usiguse mkia wake gusa kichwa chake don't touch its its tail don't touch its tail siguse mkia wake touch its head gusa kichwa chake hapa kitu cha kuzingatia ni its its utaona kwamba haina ule mkato wa juu ambao inakuwa ni mkusanyiko wa maneno mawili ambayo yatamaanisha it is hapa kuna mkato ni it na s vimeungana bila mkato wote kwa hiyo its inamaanisha lake yake chake vyake zake yake lakini kitu mnyama pamoja na vitu kwa hapa ni tofauti na binadamu tunaposema yake vyake lakini vya vitu vya ambaye si binadamu iwe ni mnyama au vitu vingine vyovyote labda meza viti na vitu kama hivyo utakapokuwa una unaonyesha umiliki kwa vitu kama hivyo utatumia its lakini kwa binadamu ambaye ni mwanamke na mwanaume utatumia his na her his kwa mwanaume na her kwa mwanamke lakini kwa vitu pamoja na wanyama utatumia its kwa hiyo its tail utajua kwamba ni, ni mkia wake wake yupi mnyama its tail au mdudu don't touch its tail touch its head 
Siguse mkia wake, gusa kichwa chake. Number six. We love our customers. We love our customers. Ina manisha tunawapenda wateja wetu. Tunawapenda wateja wetu. We love. Peki yaki na manisha tunapenda. We love. Na hapa neno la msingi la kuzingatia ni ili na wafuata our. Ambayo ina manisha yetu. Vietu. Zetu. Kwa sababu ni katika wingi. Yangu my. Yetu our. My family. Familia yangu. Our family. Familia yetu. My business. Biashara yangu. Our business. Biashara yetu. Our businesses. Biashara zetu. Our families. Familia zetu. Our lives. Maisha yetu. Na kathalika. Kwa hiyo hapa tuna our customers inayomanisha wateja wetu. Kwa hiyo utashika hapa our kwa upande wa wingi. Yetu, vietu, zetu. Letu na kathalika. We love our customers. Inayomanisha tunawapenda wateja wetu. Tuende kwenye mfano wa saba. Example 7. Example 7. Inasema. I am. Proud of their success. I am proud. Inamanesha nina jivunia. Au nina unafahari. I am proud. I am proud of their success. Inamanesha nina unafahari ya mafanikio yao. Wawo ngini unasema nina unafahari kwa ajili ya mafanikio yao. Lakini namna ngini ni kusema nina jivunia mafanikio yao. I am proud of their success. Success, mafanikio. There, ndo kitu cha kuzingatia hapa. There, ambu na manesha yao, kama tulivyo na po nyi mafanikio, they are success. Mafanikio yao. Kwa hiyo, there, yao, lao, zao, vyao, vitu, yao, familia, yao, mazao, na kathalika. There. Kwa hiyo, maeneo yote ambayo kwa kiswahili ya takuwe na itaji kitu kama hicho, utatumia there. I am proud of their success. Nina jivunia mafanikio yao. This is their family. Hii ni familia yao. Their business is so big. Biashara yao ni kubwa sana. Na kathalika. Lakini kadi utakabifanya mazoezi yako binafsi utazidi kuyaelewa ya maneno kwa urahisi zaidi. Kwa sabu utaona namna mbali mbali ya navi tumika katika sentence. Number eight. Number eight. Hard working is bitter, but its fruits are sweet. Hard working in a manisha kufanya kazi kwa bidi. Hard working. Hard working is bitter. In a manisha kufanya kazi kwa bidi ni kuchungu. Manake kufanya kazi kwa bidi ni kuchungu. Manake kuna uchungu katika kufanya kazi kwa bidi. Hard working is bitter. Aftu na neno lingini hapa. But. Ina manisha lakini. Its fruits. Fruits ni matunda. Sasa its fruits ina manisha matunda yake. Matunda yake. Its fruits. Kusatu na chuzungumzi hapa ni kufanya kazi kwa bidi. Hard working is bitter. But its fruits. Kufanya kazi kwa bidi ni kuchungu. Lakini matunda yake. Are sweet. Its fruits are sweet. Inamanisha matunda yake ni matam. Its fruits are sweet. Ambayo unezo katumia takatika. Same nyigeba unasema mti fulani uko hivi. Lakini matunda yake ni matam. But its fruits are sweet. Hard working is bitter. But its fruits are sweet. Kufanya kazi kwa bidi ni kuchungu. Lakini matunda yake ni matam. Kwa hiyo utaona hapa its. Imetumika kwa tumona mfano kwa namna nyingine. Its kitumika kwa unye matunda. Its fruits. Kule tumaona its tail, ambuwe na manisha mkia wake. Its head, kicho chake. Sapa tunona its fruits, matunda yake. Tuende kwenye mfano otu wa mwishu ambuwe ni example 9. You are my God. 
Kwa hili neno ni God au God. You are my God au you are my God. So, I give you my heart, my soul, and my spirit. You are my God. Peki yake na manesha, weo ni mungu wangu. You are my God. Iki kipengere kia pa. You are my God. Weo ni mungu wangu. So, kwa hiyo au hivyo. I give you, ninakupa. My heart. Moyo wangu. My soul. Nafsi yangu. And. Na. My spirit. Roho yangu. My heart. Moyo wangu. My soul. Nafsi yangu. My spirit. Roho yangu. You are my God. Wewe ni mungu wangu. So. Kwa hiyo. I give you my heart. Ninakupa moyo wangu. My soul nafsi yangu and my spirit na roho yangu kwa pamoja na kuwa you are my god so i give you my heart my soul and my spirit wewe ni mungu wangu kwa hiyo ninakupa moyo wangu nafsi yangu na roho yangu hapa nadhani hakuna jipya kwa sababu my umeshaiona ambayo ndio hii hapa my tena my my yangu langu changu vyangu zangu na kadhalika na baada ya kwa tumeshaona mwanzo mpaka mwisho wa haya maneno saba kupitia mifano michache tu hii ambayo tumeiona sasa nitarudia mfano mmoja baada ya mwingine kwa kusoma kwa Kiingereza tu alafu utakuwa unafuatilia yale maneno saba ambayo tumejifunza na kuona kama unakumbuka maana ya kila neno lakini hapa tumeona kwa upande tu labda maana moja au mbili ya kila neno lakini tumeona kwamba kila neno lina maana zaidi ya moja kwa upande wa Kiswahili. Kwa hiyo fanya bidii kufanya mazoezi mbalimbali ili angalau uweze kuzikamilisha maana zote kwa kila neno. Iwe kwa kutunga mifano yako binafsi au kupitia sentence tofauti tofauti au kujaribu kuyapachika ya maneno kwenye masomo moja yaliyopita ambayo tumekusha kuyaona mpaka sasa. Twende kwenye marudio. Number one This is my favorite song. This is my favorite song. This is my favorite song. Number two. I don't know your name. Number three. I need his address. Number four. I live in a house. Number five. Don't touch its tail. Touch its head. Number six. We love our customers. Seven. I'm proud of their success. Eight, hard working is bitter, but its fruits are sweet. Nine, you are my God, so I give you my heart, my soul, and my spirit. Kwa leo nitarudia tena mara ya pili mwanzo mpaka mwisho usikilize tena kwa nafasi nyingine. This is my favorite song. Two, I don't know your name. Three, I need his address. Four, I live in a house. Five, don't touch its tail, touch its head. Six, we love our customers. Seven, I'm proud of their success. Eight, hard working is bitter, but its fruits are sweet. Nine, you are my God, so I give you my heart, my soul, and my spirit. Hello, karibu ndere kujifunza na hapa tunendelea na somo la kumina tatu, lesson 13. Na katika lesson 13 tutakuwa na vipengele vitatu ambavyo ni kipengele A, kipengele B na kipengele C. Na vipengele vyote vitatu kimsingi vinajadili neno moja ambalo ni can ambalo pia linatamkwa can ambalo linamaanisha uweza. Na tutaona maana na namna ya kutumia hili neno katika sentence kupitia mifano ambayo tunayo. Kipengele A kinajihusisha na sentence ambazo ziko katika hali ya kawaida kipengele B Sentence ambazo zimekanushwa na kipengele C ni sentence ambazo ziko katika mfumo wa swali kuna swali pamoja na majibu ya mifano ambayo tutakuwa nayo katika kipengele C. Tuanze na kipengele cha kwanza na tuanze na sentence ya kwanza au mfano wa kwanza example 1 I can sing any song you know. I can ninaweza sing imba any 
song inamaanisha wimbo wowote lakini ile neno any linamaanisha chochote lolote vyovyote yeyote na kadhalika na vitu vinavyofanana na hivyo you know unajua i can sing ninaweza kuimba au ninaweza imba any song wimbo wowote you know unajua kwa hiyo kwa pamoja na kuwa i can i can sing any song you know au i can sing any song you know inaomaanisha ninaweza kuimba wimbo wowote unaoujua au ninaweza kuimba wimbo wowote uujuao i can sing any song you know au i can sing any song you know twende mfano wa pili example 2 example 2 I can help you but not today. I can help you. Peke yake inamaanisha ninaweza kukusaidia. I can help you au I can help you but lakini not today. Not today. Inamaanisha si leo. Not today. I can help you but not today. Ninaweza kukusaidia lakini si leo. Au ninaweza kusaidia ila si leo i can help you but not today twende katika mfano mwingine mfano tatu example 3 example 3 hii hapo you can be successful so don't give up you can be successful inamaanisha unaweza kufanikiwa you can be successful unaweza kufanikiwa au unaweza kuwa mwenye mafanikio. Hapa kitu cha kuzingatia ni kwamba you can unaweza you can be unaweza kuwa successful inamaanisha enye mafanikio. Kwa hiyo mwenye mafanikio, lenye mafanikio, chenye mafanikio successful. You can be successful. Kwa hiyo inamaanisha unaweza kuwa mwenye mafanikio ambaye kwa namna rahisi tuna, tunasema unaweza kufanikiwa you can you can be successful or you can be successful so kwa hiyo don't give up don't give up inamaanisha usikate tamaa don't give up ambaye kwa haraka inakuwa don't give up don't give up so don't give up kwa hiyo usikate tamaa you can be successful so don't give up unaweza kuwa mwenye mafanikio au unaweza kufanikiwa hivyo au kwa hiyo usikate tamaa you can be successful so don't give up unaweza kufanikiwa kwa hiyo usikate tamaa twende mfano unafuata example for i can read write and speak English well I can read write and speak English well I can utakumbuka inamaanisha ninaweza I can read ninaweza kusoma I can read write andika and speak nazungumza English well Kiingereza vizuri kwa tukianza na hiki pengele ambacho hakina English well tutakuwa na I can read write and speak ambayo inamaanisha ninaweza kusoma kuandika na kuzungumza I can read write and speak kwa hiyo hapa kwenye English well unaweza kaweka lugha nyingine kwa mfano I can read write and speak Swahili I can read write and speak Swahili well na kadhalika lakini hapa tuna English ambayo ni Kiingereza kwa hiyo I can read write and speak english well na maanisha ninaweza kusoma kuandika na kuzungumza kiingereza vizuri kwa ukitaka kusema vizuri sana utasema very well kwa utasema i can read write and speak english very well naweza kusoma kuandika na kuzungumza kiingereza vizuri sana twende kwenye mfano mwingine example 5 ambao ni mfano wa mwisho kwa kipengele cha kwanza i can do anything at any time i can do ninaweza kufanya i can do anything ninaweza kufanya kitu chochote au ninaweza kufanya chochote i can do anything 
at any time inamaanisha muda wowote au kwa wakati wowote au hili neno at kiliondoa inabaki any time inayomaanisha wakati wowote muda wowote kwa wakati mwingine inaweza kuwa i can do anything anytime i can do anything anytime au matamshi mengine i can do anything anytime ambayo itamaanisha ninaweza kufanya chochote muda wowote kwa hiyo hii at kuna wakati mtu mwingine anaweza kutumia mwingine asitumie kwa hiyo uikute au usikute ujue maana itabaki ile ile moja ya hili neno moja ambalo ni anytime at any time muda wowote anytime muda wowote i can do anything anytime i can do anything at any time ninaweza kufanya chochote muda wowote kwa baada ya kuona kipengele cha kwanza ambacho kimekuwa na sentensi tano jukumu lako sasa ni kuzitumia hizi sentensi na jinsi hili neno lilivyotumika hapa kufanya mazoezi yako binafsi kwa aidha kwa kubadilisha baadhi ya maneno kutoka sentensi moja kwenda sentensi nyingine au kutumia he can au vipengele vya sentensi tulizoziona hapa kwenye masomo mengine ili uweze kuongeza sasa uelewa au fahamu wa namna ya ku ya kutengeneza sentence tofauti tofauti kwa kutumia maneno tofauti tofauti. Twende kipengele cha pili, kipengele B ambacho ni kipengele kinachohusu kukanusha. Na hapa tuna kanusha can kwa kuongeza neno not kama ilivyokuwa kwa am is na are. Na kanusha kwa kutumia not. Kwa mfano I am not, tutakumbuka I am not sick inamaanisha siumwi. I am sick ninaumwa I am not sick siumwi. Lakini kwa vitendo vingine kama want go tunasema I go I don't go I want I don't want. Lakini kwa can haikanushwi kwa don't inakanushwa kwa not na inakanushwa kwa kuweka not mbele au baada ya can sio kabla kama ilivyo don't inavyokuja kabla ya vile vitendo ambavyo vinakuwa vinakanushwa. Tuanze na hii sentence ya kwanza katika kipengele B ambayo ni I can't. Kwa hiyo hii utaitamka can't au can't. I can't be you. I can't be you au I can't be you. Ambayo can't au can't ni sawa sawa na can not. Kwa hiyo haya maneno mawili cannot yamekusanywa kuwa can't. I can't kama vile ambavyo do not inakuwa don't ndivyo cannot inakuwa can't au can't. I can't be you inamaanisha siwezi kuwa wewe. Lakini hapa kichwa kuzingatia ni kwamba hapa I can't be inamaanisha siwezi kuwa you wewe. Kwa mfano mtu akitaka kusema siwezi kuwa tajiri atasema I can't be rich. I can't be rich au labda siwezi kuwa tajiri leo i can't be rich today siwezi kuwa tajiri mwaka huu i can't be rich this year au siwezi kuwa tajiri mwezi huu i can't be rich this month na kadhalika lakini angalau umeona namna ya kuweza kutumia i can't be kwa matumizi tofauti tofauti Eh, tofauti na hii sentence ambayo tunayo katika mfano huu I can't be you siwezi kuwa wewe lakini pia unaweza kubadilisha kusema huwezi kuwa mimi you can't be me you can't be me kwa hiyo unaweza kutengeneza sentence mbili hapa kwa kusema I can't be you and you can't be me siwezi kuwa wewe na wewe huwezi kuwa mimi twende mfano wa pili example 2 I can't tell you everything about my life because i don't know you i can't tell you peke yake inamaanisha siwezi kukwambia i can't tell you everything inamaanisha kila kitu about kuhusu my life maisha yangu because kwa sababu i don't know you tutakumbuka inamaanisha sikujui i don't know you sikujui kwa hiyo I can't tell you everything about my life because I don't know you. Kwa pamoja na maanisha siwezi kukwambia kila kitu kuhusu maisha yangu kwa sababu sikujui. I can't tell you everything about my life because I don't know you. 
twende mfano tatu example 3 example 3 the office is closed so you can't pay our bills now maybe in the evening the office is closed so you can't pay our bills now maybe in the evening twende taratibu kipengere kwa kipengere the office is closed ina maanisha ofisi imefungwa the office is closed so kwa hiyo au hivyo you can't pay hawezi lipa au hawezi kulipa our bills ina maanisha bills zetu now sasa au sasa hivi maybe labda in the evening jioni maybe in the evening labda jioni the office is closed so you can't pay our bills now maybe in the evening ofisi imefungwa hivyo hawezi kulipa bili zetu sasa hivi labda jioni the office is closed so you can't pay our bills now maybe in the evening mfano wa nne tulionao katika kipengele hiki ni huu hapa example 4 my friend can't speak english my friend can't speak english rafiki yangu hawezi kuzungumza kiingereza au wengine wanasema rafiki yangu hawezi zungumza kiingereza my friend can't speak english na hapa utafanya vile vile kama ambavyo katika kipengele cha kwanza ungetakiwa kufanya mazoezi yako binafsi kwa ku either kubadilisha maneno kutoka sentence moja kwenda nyingine au kupeleka kwenye masomo mengine hata hapa unaweza ukafanya vivyo hivyo twende kipengele cha mwisho ambacho ni kipengele cha kuuliza maswali kipengele C ambapo tuna mfano wa kwanza ambao ni huu hapa example 1 can you help me utaona kwamba tuko naanza na you can au i can lakini hapa kwenye swali can you inakuwa ni kama imegeuzwa lakini ambayo inamaanisha wewe unaweza wewe unaweza can you wewe unaweza alafu hapa help me help inamaanisha saidia mi mimi kwa hapa ni sana kusema wewe unaweza saidia mimi ambapo kwa tafsiri sasa sahihi itakuwa j unaweza kunisaidia au je wewe unaweza kunisaidia mimi can you help me kwa utaona kwamba can itatangulia itafuatiwa na kiwakilishi au jina mfano you i au jina la mtu kwa mfano unaweza kusema can john help me ina maanisha j john anaweza kunisaidia au rafiki yako anaweza kunisaidia ungesema can your friend help me can your friend help me rafiki yako anaweza kunisaidia na kadhalika kwa hiyo hapo sasa ni swala la mazoezi binafsi kucheza na hapa kwenye you kuweka viwakilishi au majina tofauti tofauti ya watu ili ufanye mazoezi binafsi au unaweza kubadilisha pia hata hapa vitendo kwa mfano help me ukaitoa kaweka labda nipa pesa kwa mfano can you give me money unaweza kunipa mimi pesa na vitu kama hivyo ila tuendelee sasa na mfano wetu can you help me unaweza kunisaidia can you help me majibu hapa ni ndio na hapana unaweza kunisaidia ndio ninaweza au hapana siwezi au ndio ninaweza kukusaidia hapana siwezi kukusaidia can you help me yes i can help you yes i can help you ndio ninaweza kukusaidia au ndio mimi ninaweza kukusaidia wewe hapo kama utatafsiri i na you ila hata ukisema tu ndiyo ninaweza kukusaidia inatosha kumaanisha mimi ninaweza kukusaidia wewe jibu la pili ni hapa no i can't help you utakumbuka i can't inamaanisha siwezi hapana siwezi kukusaidia au hapana mimi siwezi kukusaidia wewe no i can't help you can you help me yes i can help you no i can't help you Twende mfano wetu wa pili ambao ni huu hapa Can you cook 
meat can you cook meat unaweza kupika nyama au je unaweza kupika nyama jibu lake inaweza kuwa ndio na inaweza kupika nyama au hapana siwezi kupika nyama can you cook meat yes i can cook meat no i can't cook meat no i can't cook meat hapana siwezi kupika nyama twende mfano wa tatu example 3 ambao wenyewe una swali lakini pia una majibu example 3 can you give me some money to help these homeless children can you give me some money peke yake inamaanisha unaweza kunipa pesa kiasi au je unaweza kunipa pesa kiasi can you give me some money to help kusaidia these hawa hivi haya kama hauelewi these inavyotumika tafuta somo ambalo lina husu these that those na this utaelewa zaidi jinsi these inavyoweza kutumika katika sentence lakini kwa kwa sentence hapa these homeless children inamaanisha hawa watoto wasio na makazi homeless inamaanisha asiye na makazi au asiye na mahali pa kuishi homeless kwa hiyo homeless children maana ni watoto wasio na makazi au watoto wasio na mahali pa kuishi. Sentence nzima inakuwa can you give me some money to help these homeless children? Unaweza kunipa pesa kiasi za kuwasaidia hawa watoto wasio na makazi? Hapa ili neno za tumeliongeza japo hatuna neno la Kiingereza ambalo hapa tungeweza kulitumia kulitafsiri we za pesa za kuwasaidia au pesa ya kuwasaidia. Hiyo inakuwa ni tafsiri ya maana kwamba maana ya sentence hii kwa Kiswahili maana inayoiana nayo lazima uongeze hilo neno. Lakini kimsingi ungeamua tafsiri moja kwa moja neno kwa neno au sentence kwa sentence kupitia maneno ambayo kwenye sentence ya Kiingereza ingekuwa je unaweza kunipa pesa kusaidia ambao ni hapa to help hawa watoto wasio na makazi au hawa watoto wasio kuwa na mahali pa kuishi. Can you give me some money to help these homeless children? Unaweza kunipa pesa za kuwasaidia au pesa ya kuwasaidia hawa watoto wasio na mahali pa kuishi. Kuna namna fupi sasa ya kujibu maswali yote ambayo yatakuwa yanaulizwa kwa kutumia can you? Can you? Can you? Unaweza kusema yes, I can. Ndio ninaweza. Unaweza kunipa pesa za kusaidia hawa watoto wasio na makazi? Ndio ninaweza badala ya kurudia maneno yote ambapo labda ungetakiwa kusema ndio ninaweza kukupa pesa za kusaidia hawa watoto wasio na makazi. Kama ungeamua kuyatumia hayo maneno unarudia tu baada ya kusema I can. Yes I can au yes I can give you some money to help these homeless children. Lakini hata kusema yes I can inatosha kama vile ambavyo utakumbuka kwamba maswali yalikuwa na uzo kwa kutumia do you ungeza kujibu kwa yes i do no i don't ndivyo ilivyo pia hata kwa can you can you yes i can no i can't jibu la pili ni no i can't give you any money no i can't give you any money hapana siwezi kukupa pesa yoyote can you give me some money to help these homeless children yes i can no i can't give you any money Twende mfano wetu wa nne ambao ni wa mwisho kwa kipengele hiki cha tatu na kwa somo hili ambao ni huu hapa what can you do what can you do na maanisha unaweza kufanya nini what can you do lakini pia jambo la kuzingatia ni kwamba hapa ilipotumia ilipotumika what ungeweza kutumia ile maneno mengine kama where whose which whom na kadhalika kwa mfano ukasema where can you go ambayo inamaanisha unaweza kwenda wapi kwa hiyo hilo ni swala la mazoezi binafsi utakaporudi kwenye yale maneno utakuwa unapachika hilo neno na kujaribu kutengeneza sentence zako binafsi au kupachika tu e, he can kwenye yale maswali ambayo tulishaona kwa kutumia what when where how na kadhalika na hapa swali kishauliza labda kwa kutumia likishaulizwa kwa kutumia what au where hautasema yes na no kwa sababu natakiwa utaje kitu fulani mahususi ambacho kitakuwa kinatakiwa kulingana na swali. Kwa mfano hapa ni what can you do? Inaanisha unaweza kufanya nini? Kwa hiyo haina ndio wala hapana. 
unasema tu ninaweza kufanya kitu fulani au siwezi kufanya au siwezi kufanya kitu chochote maswali maswali maswa, hili hapa lina majibu yafuatayo i can do everything i can do everything what can you do i can do everything ambayo inamaanisha ninaweza kufanya kila kitu i can do everything what can you do i can do everything na jibu lingine ni hili hapa to be honest inamaanisha kuwa mkweli lakini kwa Kiswahili mara nyingine tunasema kusema kweli to be honest kusema kweli i can't do anything i can't do anything inamaanisha siwezi kufanya chochote au siwezi kufanya lolote i can't do anything siwezi kufanya chochote au siwezi kufanya kitu chochote au siwezi kufanya lolote kwa swali What can you do? I can do everything. Naweza kufanya kila kitu. To be honest, I can't do anything. Kusema kweli au kuwa mkweli siwezi kufanya chochote. Baada ya kuona sentensi zote nitazirudia mara moja tu kwa kila sentensi kwa Kiingereza ili kukupa mwanya wa kujikumbusha kile ambacho tumejifunza na kuona kama unakumbuka kila kitu au vingapi unakumbuka na vingapi umesahau. Kipengele A Sentence number one. I can sing any song you know. I can sing any song you know. Number two. I can help you but not today. Three. You can be successful so don't give up. Four. I can read, write and speak English well. Five. I can do anything at any time. Kipengele B. I can't be you. Number two. I can tell you everything about my life because I don't know you. Number three. The office is closed so you can't pay your bills now, maybe in the evening. The office is closed so you can't pay, pay your bills now, maybe in the evening. Four. My friend can't speak English. Pengele C. Can you help me? Yes, I can help you. No, I can't help you. Number two, can you cook meat? Number three, can you give me some money to help these homeless children? Yes, I can. No, I can't give you any money. Number four, what can you do? I can do everything. To be honest, I can't do anything. Hello, karibu endele kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la 14, lesson 14 na katika lesson 14 tuna vipengele vinne ambavyo ni kipengele A, kipengele B, kipengele C na kipengele D. Na hivi vipengele vyote vinne vinalenga kujifunza kitu kikubwa kimoja ambacho ni matumizi ya have. Kwa tuna matumizi ya have katika sentence za kawaida, matumizi ya have katika kukanusha, matumizi ya have katika kuuliza swali. Na tutaona mitindo miwili ya kuuliza swali kwa kutumia have. Tuanze na kipengele cha kwanza ambacho ni kipengele A. Na jambo la msingi katika kila kitu utakachokiona hapa ni kwamba ufuatilie somo kwa makini mwanzo mpaka mwisho ili uone namna ambavyo hili neno have pamoja na vitu vingine vitakavyokuwa vimeambatana nalo unaweza ukavitumia kwenye masomo mengine ambayo tumekwisha kuyaona mpaka sasa. Na pia uone namna ambavyo pia unaweza kachukua vile vitu vingine vya masomo yaliyopita na kuweza kuvipachika katika sentence kama hizi ili uweze kupata namna tofauti tofauti za kujieleza kwa upana. Jambo la msingi ni kuzidi kuzingatia kwamba ma, marudio binafsi na juhudi binafsi utakazokuwa nazo katika kujifunza ndizo zitakazotoa hatua moja kwenda hatua nyingine ya juu zaidi. Tuanze sasa rasmi kwa sentence ya kwanza katika kipengele A. Na sentence ya kwanza ni hapa I have money. I have money. Utakumbuka tuko na sentence ambayo ilikuwa nasema I want money inayomaanisha ninataka pesa. I have money inamaanisha nina pesa au nina hela. Au wengine wanasema fedha, nina fedha, nina pesa, nina hela ndio itakayomaanishwa katika sentence I have money. I have money. Na wengine have wanaitamka kama have. Kwa ukisikia mtasema I have money au I have money jua ni kitu kimoja ambacho ni nina pesa I have money na kitu kingine cha kuzingatia kama ambavyo tumekuwa tukiona katika masomo yaliyopita ni kwamba hapa kwenye money unaweza ukaitoa basi na kuweka vitu vingine kwa mfano 
I have food, nina chakula. I have a house, nina nyumba. I have everything, nina kila kitu. Na kadhalika kwa hiyo mazoezi yako binafsi na marudio ya masomo yaliyopita ndio atakayo kupa wepesi wa kuona namna ambavyo unaweza kufanya vitu vingi kwa kutumia hili somo. Sentence ya pili, sentence number two. I have everything I want. I have nina everything kila kitu I want ninataka. I have everything I want. Nina kila kitu ninataka au nina kila kitu ninachotaka. Wengine wanasema nina kila kitu ninachokitaka. Zote hizo zimemaanishwa katika I have everything I want. Kwa hiyo utaangalia ipi ambayo kwako inaleta maana rahisi kwa Kiswahili. Ila I have everything I want, nina kila kitu ninataka au nina kila kitu ninachokitaka. Namba tatu. Number three, I have a wife. I have a wife. Ina manisha ni namke. I have a wife. Kwa yewe kama ni mwanamke, unataka kusema ni namume, utasema I have a husband. I have a husband. Au, ni namtoto, I have a kid. Au, I have a child. Ni namatoto, I have children. Tuende kwenye namba ne, number four. Example four. I have something to say before I leave. Can you get some minutes to listen to me? I have something to say before I leave. Can you get some minutes to listen to me? Twenty taratibu na sentence hii. Hapa tu kwanza inamanisha I have something nina kitu fulani. I have something nina kitu fulani. To say kusema. Kwa hiyo kiunganisha I have something to say. I have something to say. Kwa tafsiri ya moja kwa moja ya maneno kwa maneno itakuwa nina kitu fulani kusema. Lakini kwa kawaida kwa kusoi tutasema nina kitu fulani cha kusema. Au nina kitu cha kusema. I have something to say. Kwa hiyo utashika kwamba utasema we to say kwa kingereza. Lakini kwa kusoi hii. Tusema cha kusema. Japo hiru neno cha hatulione moja kwa moja katika sentensi hii. Ila kwa tafsiri ya mana sa hii ya kiswa hili ndio inakuwa I have something to say ambayo ni nina kitu fulani cha kusema. Au wengine wasema tu nina kitu cha kusema. I have something to say. Kwa hiyo kabla tujendelea mbele. Hapa kwenye say unawezo katoa na kueka maneno mengine. Utakeo kwa unaitaji kwa kati usika. Kwa mfano I have something to eat. Nina kitu cha kula. I have something to do. Nina kitu cha kufanya. I have something to give you. Nina kitu fulani cha kukupa. Uni na kitu cha kukupa. Alafu mbele utendele na maelezo kwa mujibu wa mahitaji yako kwa wakati usika. I have something to say. Nina kitu cha kusema. Before, kabla, I leave. I leave ina manisha. Nina ondoka. Lakini unapo sema before I leave. Nisano kusema kabla ni ondoke au kabla suja ondoka. Before I leave. Before I leave. Ambapo napo hapo utazingatia kwa mba. Unezo kabadisha ili neno leave na kueka maneno mengine kwa mfano. Before I eat, kabla sijala. Before I say anything, kabla sijasema kichochote. Before I help you, kabla sijakusaidia. Ila ukisema I help you, peki yaki na manisha nina kusaidia. Kwa yuli neno before ukiunganisha na hapa mbele. Utatakiwa kuzingatia upafanyia mazwezi ya kutosha ili upaelewe upatofautisha na zile sentensi nyingine. Kwa hiyo, tukienda mwanzo mpaka mwisho wa hii sentensi, mpaka hapa kwenye kituo. I have something to say before I leave. Inamanisha nina kitu cha kusema kabla sijaundoka. I have something to say before I leave. Tuende kipande cha pili. Ambacho ni yapa. Can you get some minutes to listen to me? Hapa, can you get, inamanisha unaweza kupata, au unaweza pata, can you get, some minutes, inamanisha dakika katha, au baadhi ya dakika, dakika katha, some minutes, to listen to me, inamanisha kunisikiliza mimi, au kisema kunisikiliza peke kena tosha, some minutes to listen to me, baadhi ya dakika, au dakika katha, kunisikiliza mimi, ambapo pia, kwa kiswari unazoka ungeza za, dakika katha, za kunisikiliza, 
some minutes to listen to me. Na sentence zima itakuwa, can you get some minutes to listen to me? Unaweza kupata dakika kadhaa za kunisikiliza? Kwa hiyo, tukianza mwanzo mpaka mwisho. Hapa itakuwa hivi. I have something to say before I leave. Can you get some minutes to listen to me? Nina kitu cha kusema kabla sijaondoka. Unaweza kupata dakika kadhaa za kunisikiliza? Twende kwenye mfano tano. Example 5. Example 5 hii hapo. I have so many things to do this morning and I think I can't finish all my work today. I have so many things to do this morning and I think I can't finish all my work today. Twende taratibu kwa sentence hii hapa. Ambapo I have inamaanisha nina so many things utakumbuka inamaanisha vitu vingi sana to do kufanya. Kwa hiyo I have so many things to do inakuwa nina vitu vingi sana vya kufanya. Utakumbuka kule dakika za hapa ni vitu vya sababu vitu hatuwezi tukasema vitu za au vitu ya tunasema vitu vya I have so many things to do nina vitu vingi sana vya kufanya. I have so many things to do. This morning inamaanisha asubuhi hii, asubuhi hii. This morning. And inamaanisha na I think inamaanisha ninadhani au ninafikiri au ninafikiria I can't finish. Siwezi kumaliza au wengine wanasema siwezi maliza. I can't finish. All my work inamaanisha kazi yangu yote, all my work today leo. Kwa hiyo tukienda na, na vipande vipande sasa. Kwa hapa vipande virefu kidogo. I have so many things to do. Inamaanisha na vitu vingi sana vya kufanya. This morning asubuhi hii. And na I think I can't finish all my work today. Nadhani siwezi kumaliza kazi yangu yote leo. Sentence nzima itakuwa I have so many things to do this morning and I think I can't finish all my work today. Nina vitu vingi sana vya kufanya asubuhi hii na ninadhani au ninafikiri siwezi kumaliza kazi yangu yote leo. Twende kwenye mfano wa sita. Example 6. Example 6 inasema hivi. Example 6. I have something to give you for your birthday so come to my home tonight please i have something to give you for your birthday so come to my home tonight please twende nayo taratibu hii sentence na tukianza na kipande cha kwanza ambacho hii kinadhani tayari umeshapata mwanga. I have something to give you. Inamaanisha nina kitu cha kukupa wewe au nina kitu fulani cha kukupa wewe. I have something to give you for your birthday inamaanisha kwa ajili ya siku yako ya kuzaliwa. For for your birthday kwa ajili ya siku yako ya kuzaliwa. So come to my home. Utakumbuka so inamaanisha hivyo au kwa hiyo come to my home njoo nyumbani kwangu. So come to my home. Kwa hiyo njoo nyumbani kwangu. Tonight inamaanisha usiku huu au usiku wa leo. Please tafadhali. I have something to give you for your birthday. Na kitu fulani cha kukupa kwa ajili ya siku yako ya kuzaliwa. So come to my home tonight. Kwa hiyo njoo nyumbani kwangu usiku wa leo. Please tafadhali. I have something to give you for your birthday. So come to my home tonight, please. Na kitu fulani cha kukupa kwa ajili ya siku yako ya kuzaliwa. Kwa hiyo njoo nyumbani kwangu usiku wa leo tafadhali. Twende kipengele B ambacho sasa kipengele B ni upande wa kukanusha. Tuna sentence ya kwanza ambayo ni mfano wa kwanza ambao ni I don't have. Hapa tunakanusha kama want. Unakumbuka want ilikuwa natumia I don't want sitaki. I have nina I don't have sina I have money nina pesa I don't have money sina pesa Lakini kwa mfano huu tunai hapa I don't have a lot to say but all I can say is thank you 
so much for coming. God bless you. I don't have a lot to say, but all I can say is thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Twenty-nine sentence taratibu. I don't have a lot. In Amanisha, sina vingi au sina mengi. I don't have a lot to say kusema. Kwa hiyo sasa kama tulivyo sema kwamba na tafsiri maana ambayo tunaipata nzuri ya Kiswahili ni sina mengi ya kusema. I don't have a lot to say. Japo ile ya hatuione moja kwa moja katika hii sentensi. I don't have a lot sina mengi au sina vingi to say kusema. Ungetakiwa tafsiri sina mengi kusema lakini haileti maana inayoeleweka vizuri kwa Kiswahili. Kwa hiyo ndio sababu tunaongeza ile neno ya ili maana yake ikamilike vizuri. I don't have a lot to say. Sina mengi ya kusema. But lakini all I can say kwa pamoja na maanaisha ninachoweza kusema tu au yote ninayoweza kusema all I can say ninayoweza kusema yote ninayoweza kusema lakini kwa matumizi ya, ya mara kwa mara utasikia tu ninachoweza kusema ninachoweza kusema all I can say ninachoweza kusema is hapo hapa itamaanisha ni ninachoweza kusema ni all I can say is Thank you so much. All I can say is thank you so much. Ninachoweza kusema tu ni ninachoweza kusema ni asante sana. All I can say is thank you so much. Ninachoweza kusema ni asante sana. For coming inamaanisha kwa kuja. For coming. Kwa hiyo thank you so much for coming inamaanisha asante sana kwa kuja. Lakini you inamaanisha wewe au nyinyi. Kwa hiyo inaweza kuwa pia asanteni sana kwa kuja. Thank you so much for coming. Asanteni sana kwa kuja, asante sana kwa kuja. Kama utakuwa namwambia mtu mmoja. God bless you inamaanisha Mungu akubariki. God bless you. Mungu akubariki kama ni mtu mmoja, kama ni wengi, Mungu awabariki. God bless you. Lakini God wakati mwingine tamkwa kama God. Kwa hiyo hapa neno utasikia God, utasikia God ni yoyo Mungu. God bless you. Mungu akubariki au Mungu awabariki. Na sentensi yetu nzima sasa inakuwa I don't have a lot to say, but all I can say is thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Sina mengi ya kusema lakini ninachoweza kusema ni Mungu akubariki sana kwa kuja au Mungu awabariki sana kwa kuja. Sorry. I don't have a lot to say but all I can say is thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Kwa Kiswahili inakuwa I don't have kwa Kiswahili inakuwa sina mengi ya kusema lakini ninachoweza kusema ni asante sana kwa kuja au asanteni sana kwa kuja. Mungu akubariki au Mungu awabariki. Na twende mfano mwingine wa pili. Mfano wa pili hapo unasema I don't have any problem. I don't have any problem. Inamaanisha sina tatizo lolote. Tuangalie kwa makini tena hapa. I don't have any problem. I am okay. I don't have any problem in Amanisha. Sina tatizo lolote. I don't have any problem. Sina tatizo lolote. I am okay. Na Amanisha niko sawa. I am okay niko sawa. I don't have any problem. Lakini hapa problem inaweza katoka labda ukasema I don't have any business. Sina biashara yoyote. I don't have any house. Sina nyumba yoyote na kadhalika. Kwa hiyo any inamaanisha lolote, chochote, vyovyote, yoyote, yeyote na kadhalika. Au kwa mfano pia hata sina rafiki yeyote. I don't have any friend. I don't have any friend. Sina rafiki yeyote. Kwa upande wa namba tatu, namba three, I don't have anything to tell you now. I don't have anything to tell you now. Ino manisha, sina kitu chochote cha kukwambia sasa hivi. Maybe later. Labda, badai. I don't have anything, sina kitu chochote, to tell you kukwambia now sasa maybe labda later baadaye i don't have anything to tell you now maybe later sina kitu chochote cha kukwambia sasa labda baadaye 
twende mfano wa 4 ambao ni wa mwisho pia kwa kipengele kipengele B ambao ni huwa pa example 4 I don't have his address I don't have his address I don't have utakumbuka na maanisha sina his address anwani yake yeye wa kiume his angekuwa kike tungesema her I don't have her address sina anwani yake lakini anaezungumzia hapo ni wa kike lakini his maanisha wa kiume I don't have his address sina anwani yake ambaye ni wa kiume na kipande cha mwisho ni hiki hapa kipande cha tatu sorry kipande cha tatu ambacho ni kipengele si ambacho ni upande wa maswali na majibu tuna swali la kwanza ambalo ni do you have money do you have money utakumbuka kwenye want tulikuwa nasema do you want unataka au je unataka kwa hiyo hapa kilichobadilika tu ni neno have pale ambapo want ilikuwa inakaa kwa hiyo kama ulielewa want inavyotumika kwenye kuuliza swali hiki kipengele maana yake kitakupa shida yote kwa sababu unabadilisha tu ile neno moja ambalo want ilikuwa inakaa hapa ilipo have kwa leo do you have money una pesa au je una pesa do you have money majibu yake yanakuwa ndio na hapana ndio nina pesa hapana sina pesa twende kwenye jibu la ndio yes i have money yes i have money utakumbuka tuko tukisema do you want money ambayo inamaanisha unataka pesa jibu likuwa ndio ninataka pesa hapana sitaki pesa na ambapo tungesema yes i want money no i don't want money mabadiliko ni yale yale pale ambapo ilikuwa want tunaweka have do you have money yes i have money ndio nina pesa no i don't have money no i don't have money hapana sina pesa na kitu kingine pia hata ile njia ya mkato au njia fupi ya kujibu maswali ya do you inaendelea vile vile hata kwenye have ungeza kusema yes i do do you have money yes i do do you have money no i don't ambayo ingemaanisha sina yes i have ndio ninazo au ndio ninayo no i don't hapana sina au hapana sinayo twende kwenye mfano wa pili kwa upande wa kuuliza swali question number two. do you have anything to eat do you have anything to eat do you have anything peke yake inamaanisha una kitu chochote do you have anything una kitu chochote to eat inamaanisha kula sasa swali hili ungetaka ulitafsiri kama lilivyo ingekuwa una kitu chochote kula lakini ili ilete maana inayotakiwa kwa Kiswahili tunaliongeza ile neno cha una kitu chochote cha kula do you have anything to eat na kwa mfano kama ingekuwa e, una kitu chochote cha kusema ingekuwa do you have anything to say maana yake eat ingetoka tukaweka say na unaweza kuweka vitendo vingine tofauti tofauti ambavyo vinaweza vikaendana na swali hili hapa kulingana na mahitaji yako do you have anything to eat una kitu cha kula do you have anything to say una kitu chochote cha kusema twende kwenye majibu majibu yanakuwa ndio na hapana yes i have something to eat yes i have something to eat ndio nina kitu fulani cha kula au ndio nina kitu cha kula yes i have something to eat una kitu chochote cha kula do you have anything to eat Yes, I have something to eat. Ndio nina kitu chakula au nina kitu fulani chakula. Ambapo pia unaweza ukaamua kutaja hata kama aina ya chakula labda kwa mfano, yes, I have chips. Ndio nina chips. Na kadhalika. Kwa upande wa kukataa, tutasema no, I don't have anything to eat. No, I don't have anything to eat. Hapana sina kitu chochote chakula. Do you have anything to eat? Yes, I have something to eat. No, I don't have anything to eat. Twende kwenye swali namba tatu. Question number three. Number three. Do you have anything to do here? Do you have anything to do here? Una kitu chochote cha kufanya hapa? Una kitu chochote cha kufanya hapa? Majibu yake ni Yes, I have something to do here. Yes, I have something to do here. Ndio nina kitu fulani cha kufanya hapa au ndio nina kitu cha kufanya hapa. No. I don't have anything to do here. No, I don't have anything to do here. Hapana, 
Sina kitu chochote cha kufanya hapa. Twende kipengele chetu cha mwisho ambacho ni kipengele D na hiki tutaona namna nyingine ya kuuliza maswali kwa kutumia have. Ambapo tuna mfano mmoja tu ambao utaweza kukupa mwongozo wa kile unachoweza kukifanya kwa kupitia e, swali kama hili hapa. What do you have? What do you have? Una nini? What do you have? Na ambapo ongeza kusema labda una nini nyumbani kwako? What do you have at home? Ah uh, what do you have in your home? Una nini nyumbani kwako au ndani ya nyumbani kwako? Ambapo pia unaweza kusema what do you have in your house? Una nini ndani ya nyumba yako? Au una nini kwenye nyumba yako? Una nini kwenye gari lako? What do you have in your car? What do you have in your car? Una nini kwenye gari lako na kadhalika? Lakini swali hili hapa tumeliuliza tu kwa ufupi ilikupe mwanga wa vile ambavyo unaweza katengeneza swali lingine kutoka kwenye do you have peke yake kwenda kwenye what do you have. Hapa tuna I have keys ninafungua. I have keys. What do you have? I have keys ninafungua. I don't have anything. What do you have? I don't have anything. Sina kitu chochote. Na utagundua kwamba haya majibu haya na yes na no kama ambavyo tuliona kwenye want kwamba utakapoanza kwa swali kwa kutumia what how when hauwezi kujibu kwa kutumia yes na no kwa sababu inahitaji jibu la moja kwa moja ambalo halitaji wewe umekataa au kukubali ila unataja kitu kinachotakiwa katika swali kama hili Baada ya kuwa tumeona kila kitu ambacho kiko katika somo hili turudi tena mwanzo tusome sentensi zote kwa pamoja na nitasoma mara moja sentensi kwa kila kipengele na utakuwa unaona kama unaweza kaikumbuka maana ya sentensi husika lakini pia kama unaweza kukumbuka maana ya kila maneno ambayo tumeyaona katika hili somo zima kuanzia mwanzo mpaka mwisho. Tunaanza na A. Number 1. I have money. Number 2. I have everything I want. Number 3. I have a wife. Number 4. I have something to say before I leave. Can you get some minutes to listen to me? Number 5. I have so many things to do this morning and I think I can't finish all my work today. Number six. I have something to give you for your birthday so come to my home tonight. Please. Kipengele B. One. I don't have a lot to say but all I can say is thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Number two. I don't have any problem. I am okay. Number three. I don't have anything to tell you now, maybe later. Number four, I don't have his address. Kipengele C, do you have money? Yes, I have money. No, I don't have money. Number two, do you have anything to eat? Yes, I have something to eat. No, I don't have anything to eat. Number three, do you have anything to do here? Yes, I have something to do here. No, I don't have anything to do here. Kipengele D ambacho ni cha mwisho chenye sentence moja ambayo ni swali na majibu yake mawili. Number one, What do you have? I have keys. I don't have anything. Hello, karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la 15, lesson 15 na katika lesson 15 tutaangalia namna ya kutoa au kupokea agizo la kufanya au kutofanya kitu fulani. Na tuna jumla ya mifano moja ambayo itatusaidia kujifunza katika somo hili. Pia mwisho tutaangalia matumizi ya neno just katika kutoa au kupokea agizo la kufanya au kutofanya kitu fulani. Jambo la msingi ni kuwa makini kufuatilia somo kuanzia mwanzo mpaka mwisho ili uone jinsi ambavyo kila sentensi unaweza kuitumia kujieleza au kuunganisha na masomo mengine ambayo yamekwisha kutangulia kuweza kujieleza kwa upana zaidi. Kwa hiyo hili somo litatusaidia kupiga hatua nyingine mbele kutokea pale ambapo tayari tumeshafikia mpaka sasa. Tuna jumla ya masomo 14 ambayo tayari umeshafuatilia. Kama umekuwa mfuatiliaji mzuri maana yake umefuatilia kwanza mpaka 14 na kama ndio mara ya kwanza unafuatilia hili somo la 15. Ukiona kama kuna vitu vielewi vizuri basi rudi somo la kwanza mpaka la 14 utakapokuja la 15 utapata changamoto yote katika kuelewa. Tuanze na mfano wa kwanza. Example 1. Example 1 inasema come home I miss you so much. Come home. Utakumbuka katika masomo yaliyopita tulikuwa naona sentence kama I want to come. 
I want to come inaanisha nataka kuja au I need to come ninahitaji kuja lakini hapa hatujaanza na I wala you tumeanza na neno come come neno come linamaanisha njo come kwa hiyo mtu akikwambia come amekwambia ame njo na pia ukitaka kumwambia mtu njo uta, utatumia neno moja tu come come kwa mfano njo hapa come here nenda pale go there na kadhalika kwa utaangalia namna ya kutumia haya maneno ambayo hayana i wala hayana you wala hayana he she na kadhalika come home njo nyumbani come home njo nyumbani hapo ongeza kuongeza maneno mengine ba come home today come home now come home in the evening na kadhalika lakini kwa mfano wetu huu hapa ni come home njo nyumbani I miss you so much. I miss you so much na maana na kumisi sana. Kwa sababu miss asilimia kubwa itafsiriwa kwa Kiswahili kama kukosa. Kwa mfano hapo ungesema ninakukosa sana lakini ni ninakumisi sana. Come home, I miss you so much. Njo nyumbani ninakumisi sana. Maana yake hii hapa ni agizo ambalo unampa mtu. Au kama umeambiwa ni agizo unalopewa wewe la kuja nyumbani. Twende katika mfano wa pili ambao ni huu hapa. Bye everything you want buy everything you want buy ina maana nunua buy tutakumbuka i want to buy ninataka kununua buy everything you want nunua kila kitu unachotaka buy everything you want nunua kila kitu unachotaka namba tatu, stand up and give me cooking oil then sit down and keep quiet stand up inamaanisha simama au simama juu stand up give me inamaanisha nipe au nipe mimi give me sit down inamaanisha kaa au keti au kaa chini keti chini sit down keep quiet kaa kimya ungeona sema nyamaza kaa kimya au nyamaza keep quiet kwa kuna maagizo matatu stand up simama Give me nipe Sit down kaa chini au keti chini keep quiet kaa kimya au nyamaza lakini mfano mzima unakuwa hivi Mfano wetu mzima unakuwa hivi Stand up and give me cooking oil Stand up and give me cooking oil na maanisha simama na unipe mafuta ya kupikia cooking oil mafuta ya kupikia Simama na unipe mafuta ya kupikia au simama na nipe mafuta ya kupikia then ambayo ina maana kisha au halafu sit down and keep quiet sit down ka chini na nyamaza and keep quiet then sit down and keep quiet kisha au halafu ka chini na nyamaza au wengine wanasema ka chini unyamaze ka chini na unyamaze au ka chini na ukae kimya Then sit down and keep quiet. Mfano mzima unakuwa stand up and give me cooking oil, then sit down and keep quiet. Simama na unipe mafuta ya kupikia, halafu kaa chini na unyamaze. Kwa hiyo kama kuna maelezo mengine yote ya ziada unaweza kayaweka katika sentence kama hii au ukatoa baadhi ya vipande ukavitumia katika sentence nyingine, ukaviongezea maelezo unayotaka kulingana na mahitaji yako binafsi au kulingana pia na mazoezi ambayo umefanya kupitia sentence nyingine. Tuendelee na mfano wa nne. Example 4 Sleep early Sleep peke yake inamaanisha lala sleep Early mapema sleep early lala mapema Don't watch TV Don't watch TV Tukitoa neno don't tunabaki na watch TV ambalo ambalo ni agizo Watch TV angalia televisheni au angalia luninga Watch TV au wengine nasema tazama kwa tazama TV Tazama Luninga, tazama TV, watch TV. Lakini ukiweka neno don't, maana yake linakanusha ile ya tazama inakuwa usitazame. Watch, tazama. Don't watch, usitazame. Kwa hiyo watch TV, tazama TV, don't watch TV, usitazame TV. Kwa sentence nzima inakuwa sleep early, don't watch TV. Lala mapema, usitazame TV. Lala mapema, usitazame TV. Kwa hiyo pale pote ambapo umeona kulikuwa kuna maagizo aba keep quiet 
ukitaka kusema usikae kimya utasema don't keep quiet na kadhalika twende kwenye mfano wa tano example 5 don't come late keep time don't come don't come ina maana usije utakumbuka ile come home njoo nyumbani usije nyumbani don't come home kwa mfano usije nyumbani kwa sababu sitaki kukuona don't come home because i don't want to see you don't come late late ina maana kwa kuchelewa don't come late usije kwa kuchelewa keep time ina maana tunza muda au zingatia muda keep time don't come late keep time usije kwa kuchelewa zingatia muda labda kama ungetaka kusema usiende shuleni kwa kuchelewa ungesema don't go to school late usiende shuleni kwa kuchelewa number 6 number 6 don't spend all the money on unnecessary stuff au unaweza kutumia items au things kwa haya ni maneno matatu ambayo unaweza kutumia kwa kuwakilisha kitu kitu kimoja kama tutakavyoona baada ya ufafanuzi tuanze taratibu na hii hapa don't spend ina maana usitumie don't spend usitumie all the money pesa yote all the money on ina maana kwenye unnecessary ina maana isiyo ya muhimu isiyo hitajika isiyo takiwa on juu ya au kwenye na kadhalika kwa hiyo on unnecessary kwenye isiyo hitajika visivyo hitajika kisichotakiwa na kadhalika lakini huku mbele kuna staff ili neno staff linamaanisha vitu ambavyo hautaki kuvitaja jina kwa vitu kadha wa kadha au vitu kadhaa vitu fulani staff au mambo fulani staff items na yenyewe ni vitu items vitu things na yenyewe ni vitu things vitu au mambo twende kwenye muunganisho ambapo tukianza na kipande hiki hapa don't spend all the money inamaanisha usitumie pesa yote don't spend all the money usitumie muda wote don't spend all the time don't spend all the money usitumie muda wote on unnecessary stuff kwenye mambo yasiyotakiwa kwenye mambo yasiyohitajika au kwenye vitu visivyohitajika vitu visivyotakiwa au vitu visivyokuwa vya muhimu don't spend all the money on unnecessary stuff usitumie pesa yote kwenye vitu visivyokuwa muhimu lakini ingekuwa kama usitumie muda wote kwenye TV don't spend all the time on TV don't spend all the all the time on TV au usitumie muda wote kwenye mitandao ya kijamii don't spend all the time on social media na kadhalika kwa unaona kwamba kipande hiki unaweza kuchukua fu kukitumia unavyotaka wewe lakini pia unaweza kuachana na staff labda ukasema items labda ni mtu alikuwa ameenda kununua vitu kadha wa kadha kwa kumwambia don't spend all the money on unnecessary items labda kaenda dukani kaenda mahali fulani kwa ajili ya manunuzi au kwa ajili ya shopping mwambia usitumie pesa zote kwenye vitu ambavyo si muhimu au si vya lazima au havihitajiki au havitakiwi things inamaanisha vitu au mambo kwa hiyo unaweza kusema pia don't spend all the money on unnecessary things usitumie pesa zote kwenye vitu au mambo yasiyokuwa ya muhimu ya lazima yasiyohitajika au yasiyotakiwa ila ili neno an u na n zikitoka hizo herufi mbili tunabaki na necessary necessary inamaanisha muhimu au yenye kuhitajika yenye kutakiwa necessary kwa badala ya, ku, ya, ku, ya kusema don't spend unaweza kusema spend all the money ambayo itamaanisha tumia pesa zote on necessary stuff tumia pesa yote kwenye mambo ya muhimu spend all the money on necessary stuff ila kinyume chake don't spend all the money on unnecessary stuff au on unnecessary items on unnecessary things twende katika mfano wa saba example 7 example 7 hii hapa inasema try to understand me i don't have money now try ina maana jaribu try kwa hiyo kutakumwambia mtu jaribu utamwambia try try jaribu tena try again try to understand me utakumbuka kwamba 
I understand you inamanisha ni nakuelewa. I don't understand you sikuelewe. Try to understand me. Jaribu kunielewa. Try to understand me. Jaribu kunielewa. I don't have money. Utaikumbuka kumba inamanisha sina pesa. Now sasa. Au sasa hivi. I don't have money now. Sina pesa sasa. Au sasa hivi. Try to understand me. I don't have money now. Jaribu kunielewa. Sina pesa sasa hivi. Kwa hapa kunye nao unazo katua leo. Unazo kaka leo kumfano. I don't have money today. I don't have money this week. Kumfano. I don't have money this month. Na katharika. Tuende kwenye mfano wa wanane. Say something about this event. Say something about this event. Inamanisha sema kitu. Au sema kitu fulani. Kuhusu tukio hili. Say. Sema. Say. Something. Kitu fulani. About. Kuhusu. This event. Tukio hili. Au hili tukio. Say something about this event. Sema kitu fulani kuhusu hili tukio. Twende number nine. Number nine. Ambo na number tisa. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Na manisha usini danganye. Don't lie to me. I know everything. Ninajua kila kitu. Don't lie to me. I know everything. Usini danganye. Ninajua kila kitu. Au kumfano kesema usijaribu kunidanganya. Don't try to lie to me. Don't try to lie to me. Usijaribu kunidanganya. Kwa tona kumba hii try to. Imekuja hapa. Don't try to lie to me. Usijaribu kunidanganya. Kwa ndiyo namna hili ambayo nakona kumbia kumbo nezo kachukua vipande vya maneno kwa vipachika katika semi nyingine. Kwa hii nakua ni jukumlako binafsi. Kwa sabu tayari unakua mesha elekezo hapa kichwa kufanya. Kwa mazoezi yako binafsi. Ndiyo ya nayo weza kukufanya upigi ya tuwakubwa zaidi. Zaidi hata ya haya masomo unayo pokea hapa. Kwa sababu kiunganisha unganisha hivi vitu. Tajukta kumbo umekua na wezo mkubwa. Kuliko hata vila ambavyo ungefikiria kwamba haya masomo machache. Angeweza kukusaidia kwa umepigi hatua kama hiyo. Lakini pia hapo ungejaribu, ungita kumambia mtu usinidanganye kuhusu jina lako. Lapo ungewambia, don't lie to me about your name. Au usinidanganye kuhusu um, um, umri wako. Don't lie to me about your age. Number kumi. Okay. Au okay. 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 Don't forget to bring me a gift. Don't forget na manisha usisahau. Don't forget usisahau. Ok, inamanisha sawa. Ok. Jepo kwa kiswaidi vile vile unasikia mtu bayo kusama sawa. Nasama ok, ok. Kwa hii mesha zoeleka tu. Lakini inamanisha sawa. Don't forget usisahau to bring me. Inamanisha kuniletea. To bring me. To bring me a gift. Inamanisha zawadi. Zawadi moja. Kwa kama zinge kwa ni zawadi nyingi ungesema gifts. A ungetoa ukasema gifts. Yapo ungeungeza S. Kwa hiyo... Ok, don't forget to bring me a gift. Sawa, usasawa kuniletea zawadi. Nesa kwa bani mtu meongea mambo katha, afi nafikia point, au nafikia hatua ambayo nataka mambia sawa, na katha alika kuhu, nesa kwa mbe sawa, usasawa kuniletea zawadi. Ok, don't forget to bring me a gift. Tuende kwenye sentence ya kumina moja, number 11. Have time with your family. Have time with your family. Have time with your family. Have time inamanisha kuwa na muda. Kuwa na muda. Have time with pamoja na your family, familia yako. Kwa you have time with your family inamanisha kuwa na muda na familia yako. Have time with your family. Kuwa na muda na familia yako. Maerezo mengine utaungezea kulingana na vile utakavyo hitaji. Lakini kama unafanya marudiwa mara kwa mara ya masomo, utajua ni vitu gani unazo kufiongeza hapa ukapata kitu kikubwa cha kujieleza. Hatua inafuata, tunenda kutumia hili neno. Kwa itabidi ukalidi ninavyo andikwa. Minda kwa nalitamka tu, taludisha kwenye sentensi zote ambazo tumeziona. Tuwane ilinaze katumika vipi. Just, just, just. Kwa angalia herufizake uzishike kichwane. Kwa nda kapo kwa nasema, hili picha iwe na kujia kwa mba nineno gani tunalisema hapo. Just. Kwa tuende kwenye sentensi ya kwanza kabisa, tuwane just inatumika vipi. Kwa mfano, katika hii sentence number one, hii neno just linge kuja hapa mwanzoni kabisa. Hapa, tukasema just come home. Just come home. Mabwena manisha, hebu njo nyumbani. Au njo nyumbani tu. Kwa hiyo, itategimea na msistizo unaweka kwa upande gani. Kwa mfano, hebu njo nyumbani. Ineza kwa ni msistizo kwa mba, 
lazima huyo mtu aje au kwamba kuna umuhimu wa kuja nyumbani. Hebu njoo nyumbani. Just come home. Just come home. Lakini pia just come home inaweza kuwa njoo nyumbani tu. Maana hakuna kitu kingine kikubwa kinatakiwa isipokuwa yeye kuja nyumbani. Njoo nyumbani tu. Just come home. Just come home. Kwa hiyo kama unajua namna ambavyo ya maneno mawili yanatumika kwa Kiswahili tu na hebu ndivyo itakavyotumika kwa Kiingereza pia au utasikia mara nyingi watu sana watu wakisema just just go nenda tu eh, au hebu nenda just help me hebu nisaidie au nisaidie tu na kadhalika kwa just come home hebu njoo nyumbani haya maneno mengine tayari tumeshaona tafsiri yake miss you so much katika namba mbili unaweza kufanya vile vile pia hapa mwanzoni number 2 kasema just buy everything you want just buy everything you want hebu nunua kila kitu unachotaka au nunua tu kila kitu unachotaka hapa pia number 3 unaweza kaiweka hapo nyie just stand up hebu simama hebu simama just stand up au simama tu just stand up itategemea na msisitizo wako ulionao ni upi kama ni wahebu au ni watu kama ambavyo unazielewa katika Kiswahili just stand up lakini pia kama hili neno na yenyewe linajitegemea just give me cooking oil nipe tu mafuta ya kupikia lakini hauwezi kuzunganisha just just kwenye sentence moja kama hii. Hauwezi kusema just stand up and just give me oil. Ukisema just moja inatosha kwa sababu hii sentence yote inatoa agizo, agizo fulani moja japo lina maagizo tofauti tofauti ndani yake lakini ni kauli moja inayotoa maagizo yoyote. Kwa utasema tu just moja huko mwanzo itatosha. Just stand up and give me cooking oil then sit down and keep quiet. Hapo unaweza kusema just sleep early. Hebu lala mapema. Just sleep early. Hebu lala mapema. Au lala mapema tu. Just sleep early. Twende kwenye namba tano. Ambapo unaweza kaiweka hapa. Unasema tu just don't come late. Just don't come late. Usije tu kwa kuchelewa au hebu usije kwa kuchelewa au unaweza kaacha usiweke hapo kaiweka hapo kasema don't come late just keep time usije kwa kuchelewa hebu tunza muda au hebu zingatia muda au zingatia muda tu okay twende kwenye namba sita na penyeza kusema just don't spend all the money on unnecessary stuff hebu usitumie pesa zote kwenye vitu visivyo kwa vya lazima au vya muhimu au usitumie tu pesa kwenye vitu visivyo kuwa vya muhimu Number 7 Just try to understand me. Hebu jaribu kunielewa. Nadhani hii itakuwa inaeleweka kwa watu wengi zaidi kwa Kiswahili labda kuliko hata sentence nyingine ambazo nimesema. Hebu jaribu kunielewa au jaribu tu kunielewa. Just try to understand me. Just try to understand me. Afuku mbele maelezo tayari nadhani unajua maana yake. Hapa namba nane pia Just itakuja pia hapa mwanzoni just say something about this event just say something about this event hebu sema kitu kuhusu ile tukio au kama ungeunganisha na vile nilivyokuambia mwanzo ukaichukua hii try to ukaiweka hapa kwa sababu kusema try to say inamaanisha jaribu kusema kwa hiyo just try to say something hebu jaribu kusema kitu fulani Just try to say something about this, this event. Hebu jaribu kusema kitu fulani kuhusu ile tukio. Kuna kuna namna mbalimbali mbali za kuweza kueleza kitu kwa kuchukua vipande tofauti tofauti na kuviunganisha ambavyo kama ninavyozidi kusisitiza ni swala la mazoezi yako binafsi na umakini unaposikiliza somo ili uelewe hata kama unakitoa mahali kwenda kupeleka sehemu nyingine usije ukakuta umepotosha maana. Hapa namba tisa itakuwa vile vile just just don't lie to me. Just don't lie to me. Hebu usinidanganye. Au usinidanganye tu. Just don't lie to me. Na hii pia hili neno, haya maneno mawili unaweza kurudisha hapa. Try to. Just don't try to lie to me. Hebu usijaribu kunidanganya au usijaribu tu kunidanganya. Twende hapa number 10. Haiwezi kuja kwenye just okay itakuwa hapa kwenye Okay, just don't forget. Usisahau tu au hebu usisahau. Just don't forget to bring me a gift. Usisahau tu kuniletea zawadi au hebu usisahau kuniletea zawadi. Hapa namba 11 ambayo ni ya mwisho 
Takuwa just have time with your family. Just have time with your family. Hebu kuwa na muda na familia yako. Hebu kuwa na muda na, maf- na familia yako. Au kuwa na muda tu na familia yako. Have time with your family. Just have time with your family. Nitarudia sentence kwanza mwanzo mpaka mwisho. Nitasoma kwa Kiingereza. Tusitaweka lile neno just. Kama utakoja lielewa vizuri basi utarudisha nyuma tena usikilize upya kwa makini mwanzo mpaka mwisho ili ulielewe vizuri. Ila hapa nitazisoma tu sentence ambazo tumeziona tangu mwanzo. Alafu utaona kama just utaikumbuka kwa kichwa namna ya kuiweka hapa. Kama utakumbuka utafanya marudio. Tanza number 1. Come home. I miss you so much. Number 2. Buy everything you want. Number 3. Stand up and give me cooking oil then sit down and keep quiet. Number four, sleep early, don't watch TV. Five, don't come late, keep time. Six, don't spend all the money on unnecessary stuff or unnecessary items and necessary things. Seven, try to understand me, I don't have money now. Eight, say something about this event. Nine, don't lie to me, I know everything. Ten, Okay, don't forget to bring me a gift. 11. Have time with your family. Hello, karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la 16. Lesson 16. Na kama umekuwa ukifuatilia masomo kwa makini kuanzia somo la kwanza mpaka somo la 15, basi hapa utapata wepesi katika kulielewa hili somo, lakini pia litakusaidia kupiga hatua nyingine katika kujifunza kwako. Jambo la msingi ni kufuatilia somo kuanzia mwanzo mpaka mwisho lakini pia kuna unafanya marudio ya mara kwa mara ya masomo ili usiweze kusahau vitu ulivyojifunza ili tunapoingia katika somo linalofuata uweze kuwa na mwendelezo mzuri yani usipate mzigo mkubwa wa kuwa umeshasahau vitu ambavyo tunavitumia kuendelezea katika masomo yanayofuata katika somo hili la 16 kuna maneno kadhaa ambayo tutajifunza namna ya kuyatumia katika sentensi pamoja na maana yake lakini somo hili la 16 lesson 16 linaelekeana na somo la 12 kwa hiyo kama somo la 12 utakuwa labda unalikumbuka linahusu nini au ulilielewa vizuri basi itakuwa ni faida kupitia somo la 16 lakini kama somo la 12 utarudi na ukakuta ulielewi vizuri basi ulisome kwa umakini ili usichanganye matumizi ya haya maneno kwa sababu yanaelekeana na maneno ambayo tuliona katika lesson 12 tuanze basi na sentence ya kwanza na tutakuwa na jumla ya mifano saba mifano saba kama unavyoona hapa kisha tutakuwa na nyongeza ya vipengele fl- kadhaa ambavyo tutaviona pia vina vinatusaidia vipi katika kujifunza matumizi ya haya maneno. Tuiangalie maneno yenyewe ambayo tutakuwa nayo katika lesson 16. Ambayo ni haya hapa kuna neno me, kuna neno you, kuna her, kuna him, kuna it, kuna us, kuna them. Baadhi ya maneno umewahi kuyaona kwa mfano me, you, it, us them hiyo mkini maneno yote umewahi kuyaona katika mifano tofauti tofauti ambayo nimekuwa nikitoa lakini hapa tutaangalia sasa kimsingi matumizi ya haya maneno ili aweze kusaidia kupiga hatua moja kwenda hatua nyingine tuanze na mfano wa kwanza mfano wetu wa kwanza uko katika mfumo wa swali na swali yetu ni ile hapa do you love me do you love me inamaanisha unanipenda au je unanipenda ukitafsiri na ile hapa neno mi inamaanisha unanipenda mimi au je unanipenda mimi sasa hapa kazi iko kwenye eneo hili hapa maadam sentence kama hizi hapa unazifahamu kwa mfano do you love me au do you want to help me kwa lile neno mi mahali linapokaa ndipo tutaenda kuangalia jinsi gani maneno haya yanaweza yakakaa tukapata ujumbe kuelekea kwa watu wengine tofauti na mimi kwa hapa kwa mfano tukitoa hili neno mi katika sentence hili neno mi Tunaweza tukaweka neno kwa mfano ha do you love her do you love her ina maanaisha je unampenda ha ni wa kike ni sana kusema je unampenda yeye lakini ukisema tu unampenda inatosha kumaanisha kwamba ni yeye lakini yupi wa kike do you love her unampenda yeye unampenda yeye wa kike ukitaka kuuliza kama unampenda wa kiume do you love him do you love him do you love him do you love him unampenda yeye lakini wa kiume do you love him unampenda yeye wa kiume ukitaka kusema kusemea kumuuliza mtu kama anapenda kitu fulani do you love it do you love hapa kwenye mi utaweka it ambayo inamaanisha kitu ikiunganisha pamoja na wanyama do you love it 
unakipenda au unalipenda kama ni mnyama unampenda do you love it do you love it kwa hiyo him na ha ni kwa binadamu kwa hiyo hapa kuna binadamu hakika na binadamu wa kiume tutatumia ha na him do you love it unakipenda unalipenda au unampenda do you love her do you love him lakini wengine wanatumia hata kwa baadhi ya mifugo wengine wanatumia haya ha na him kumaanisha mnyama wa kike na wa kiume lakini asilimia kubwa it itawakilisha wanyama lakini itakapotokea baada imetumika kwa mnyama utajua kwamba ha ni mnyama wa kike him ni mnyama wa kiume kwa do you love ha unampenda wa kike do you love him unampenda wa kiume do you love it unakipenda unalipenda au unampenda kama ni mnyama na pia hapa hapa ambapo umeweka ha him unaweza kuweka jina la mtu kwa mfano do you love peter unampenda peter do you love james unampenda james do you love my friend unampenda rafiki yangu do you love my parents unawapenda wazazi wangu na kadhalika lakini pia tukija kwa upande wa haya maneno us na them do you love us do you love us do you love us inamaanisha unatupenda us inasimamia sisi do you love me unanipenda mimi do you love us unatupenda sisi them inamaanisha wao do you love them do you love them unawapenda do you love them unawapenda ambao ni wao lakini hili neno wao unaweza kutoa sasa ukawataja kwa mfano do you love teachers unawapenda walimu lakini pale ambapo ambapo tunasema kwa Kiswahili unawapenda ndipo utakapotumia neno them kwa hiyo hautawataja ila utawakilisha kwa them una wapenda do you love them una tupenda ambao ni sisi do you love us unampenda wa kiume do you love him unampenda wa kike do you love her na kadhalika kwa hiyo kama utakuwa makini hapa katika sentensi ya kwanza tayari itakuwa imeshakupa mwanga wa kuweza kutumia haya maneno ya juu kwa namna tofauti tofauti kufikisha ujumbe sehemu tofauti tofauti hasa tutatumia hii sentensi kuuliza na kujibu swali kisha pale pote ambapo mi itakuwa imetumika ujue kwamba hapo ungeweza kutumia haya maneno kama yangekuwa yametumika hapa kwenye jibu pia. Kwa tuliangalie swali na jibu. Tuangalie swali zima na majibu yake. Jambo la msingi ni umakini tu vile swali litakavyoulizwa na litakavyojibiwa. Do you love me? Unanipenda? Hapa kuna majibu ya ndio na hapana. Majibu ya mkato utakumbuka kuna yes I do. No I don't kwa swali ambayo linaanza na do you lakini hapa twende na maelezo yote marefu katika kujibu swali kwa yes yes i love you do you love me unanipenda yes i love you ndio ninakupenda maelezo mengine kwa mfano naweza kuwa and to be honest i love you more than i love myself I, yes i love you ndio ninakupenda and na to be honest inamaanisha kuwa mkweli to be honest kuwa mkweli i love you ninakupenda more than inamaanisha kuliko au zaidi ya i love myself i love myself inamaanisha ninajipenda au ninajipenda mimi mwenyewe kwa hiyo more than i love myself ni zaidi ya ninavyojipenda au kuliko ninavyojipenda kwa hiyo i love you more than i love myself ninakupenda kuliko ninavyojipenda and to be honest na kuwa mkweli au wengine kwa kusema nasema na kusema kweli and to be honest i love you more than i love myself na kuwa mkweli ninakupenda kuliko ninavyojipenda au kuliko ninavyojipenda mimi mwenyewe kwa jibu la yes ikiunganisha na haya maelezo ya mfano itakuwa yes i love you and to be honest i love you more than i love myself ndio ninakupenda na kuwa mkweli ninakupenda kuliko ninavyojipenda mimi mwenyewe. Jibu la no linaweza kuwa kwa mfano No. I don't love you at all. Ambayo siongeni pia. No, I don't love you peke yake inamaanisha sikupendi at all inamaanisha hata kidogo au kabisa. No, I don't love you at all. Hapana sikupendi hata kidogo au hapana sikupendi kabisa. Just 
try to understand just try to understand me utaikumbuka kwamba inamaanisha jaribu tu kunielewa au hebu jaribu kunielewa mfano mzima utakuwa jibu zima la no itakuwa no i don't love you at all just try to understand me hebu jaribu kunielewa au jaribu tu kunielewa sikupendi hata kidogo hebu jaribu kunielewa au sikupendi hata kidogo jaribu tu kunielewa twende katika example 2 mfano wa pili mfano wa pili unasema hivi mfano wa pili unasema do you love peter do you love peter inamaanisha je unampenda peter au unampenda peter ambapo utakumbuka hapa ilikuwa ni mi unanipenda mimi hapa unampenda peter lakini ungeamua utoe peter ungesema him wa kiume do you love him unampenda do you love him unampenda kama tayari huyo unayemzungumzia anafahamika kwa huyo unayemuuliza swali lakini hapa ni kama unataka utaje jina la huyo mlengwa do you love peter sasa katika majibu unaweza peter usirudie ukajibu hivi yes i love him yes i love him ndio ninampenda lakini utatumia yeye wa kiume kwa sababu ni peter anayezungumziwa do you love peter Yes I love him. Yes I love him. Ambapo pia ungeza kujibu Yes I love Peter. Yes I love Peter. Lakini unaweza kuachana na Peter ukasema Yes I love him. Ndio ninampenda. No, I don't love him. Hapana simpendi. No I don't love him. Do you love Peter? No I don't love him. Maelezo mengine unaweza kaongeza kwa mfano Yes I love him so much. No, I don't love him at all. Hapana simpendi hata kidogo. Kwa hapa itakuwa sasa ni mazoezi yako binafsi na ile kumbukumbu uliyonayo katika kujibu maswali ndio utakayokupa maelezo ya ziada kama utahitaji kuyaweka. Twende katika mfano mwingine, example number 3. Example 3 inasema hivi. Example 3. Do you know these people? Do you know? Peke yake inamaanisha unajua au je unajua? Au je wajua? Do you know? These people utakumbuka na maanisha hawa watu. Kama unakumbuka vizuri matumizi ya these, those, that, this. These people hawa watu au watu hawa. Do you know these people? Unawajua watu hawa? Au unawajua hawa watu? Majibu yake atakuwa hivi. Kwa sababu tumeanza na do you. Majibu ni ndio na hapana. Yes. I know them. Them inamaanisha wao. Yes, I know them. Ndio ninawajua. Yes I know them. Ambapo ungeweza kwenye jibu pia kurudia these people. Yes I know these people. Yes I know these people. Ndio ninawajua hawa watu. Ukiamua kuiondoa hawa watu utasema ndio ninawajua. Yes I know them. Yes I know them. No, I don't know them. No, I don't know them. No, I don't know them. Hapana siwajui. Mfano mwingine ni mfano ambao litakiwa kuwa namba 4. Kwa tumetoka namba 3. Hii namba ichukulie kama namba 4. Kitu cha msingi hapa ninatakiwa kuwa namba 4. Lakini twende nayo tu hivyo hivyo. Can you teach me how to write a job application letter? Can you teach me how to write a job application letter hapa tu utaikumbuka can you teach me unaweza kunifundisha au je unaweza kunifundisha how to write inamaanisha namna ya kuandika au jinsi ya kuandika application letter inamaanisha barua ya maombi letter ni barua application ni maombi kwa application letter barua ya maombi job ni kazi kwa job application letter barua ya maombi ya kazi hii e ni kwa sababu ni moja ingekuwa kama ni barua nyingi tungesema can you teach me how to write job application letters e tungeachana nayo lakini kwa pamoja hii sentence inakuwa can you teach me how to write a job application letter je unaweza kunifundisha namna ya kuandika au jinsi ya kuandika barua ya maombi ya kazi sasa hapa kuna namna nyingine ya kuweza kujibu yale maswali ya yes na no bila kutumia yes na no kwa kutumia neno kama sure sure inamaanisha hakika au 
bila shaka au bila wasiwasi au bila wasiwasi wote bila shaka lolote Ko, sure what time can i teach you sure what time can i teach you what time can i teach you sure bila shaka ni muda gani naweza nikakufundisha au muda gani ninaweza kukufundisha what time muda gani what time what time can i teach you muda gani naweza kufundisha kwa hiyo hapa manake umekubali lile lile ombi lake ombi la mtu aliyekuambia umsaidie kumfundisha namna kuandika barua ya maombi ya kazi lakini bila kutumia ndio kuonyesha kukubali ila umesema tu hakika au bila shaka sure na utasikia kitumika mara nyingi sana hasa kwa watu wa Marekani ya kaskazini au North America Can you teach me how to write a job application letter? Sure. What time can I teach you? Sure. Kwa Kiswahili utasikia tu sure. Kwa ukisikia sure ndio hapa sure au sure. What time can I teach you? Sure. What time can I teach you? Bila shaka muda gani naweza kufundisha? Na wakati mwingine inaweza kuwa tu hili hapa neno moja. Sure. Manake sawa au bila shaka. Manake ombi limekubalika bila kuongeza maelezo mengine yoyote. Lakini hapa ni kutaka tu kujua kwamba mda gani huyo mtu anaweza kafundishwa. Twende katika mfano mwingine ambapo sasa ulitakiwa kwa mfano namba tano lakini twende nao hivyo hivyo. Tusijali hii namba tuangalie tu iki kilichomo ndani. Do you have anything to tell us? Do you have or do you have do you have anything to tell us? Ambapo kwa haraka itakuwa do you have do you have anything to tell us do you have anything to tell us do you have anything to tell us una kitu chochote cha kutuambia kama utakumbuka matumizi ya have au have hii sentence haitakuwa na shida labda ongezeko ni hapa as to tell us kutuambia sisi do you have anything to tell us una kitu chochote cha kutuambia au una kitu chochote cha kutuambia sisi jibu linaweza kuwa yes I have something to tell you. Yes, I have something to tell you. Ndio nina kitu cha kuambia. Utakumbuka you inamaanisha wewe au nyinyi. Kwa hiyo ndio nina kitu fulani cha kuku, cha kuambia nyinyi. Ndio nina kitu fulani cha kuambia hapa ni nyinyi badala ya wewe. Kwa sababu swali inasema cha kutuambia sisi. Do you have anything to tell us? Yes, I have something to tell you. Ah unaweza kujibu pia jibu la no. No. I don't have anything to tell you. No, I don't have anything to tell you. Hapana sina kitu chochote cha kuambia. Ambapo hapa sasa uta unaweza kubadilisha ikawa me, ikawa her, ikawa him, ikawa them. Do you have anything to tell them? Do you have anything to tell her? Do you have anything to tell me? Na kadhalika. Twende kwenye mfano mwingine ambao kwa hapa umeandikwa namba 4. Na mfano huu hapo I want to sell my old smartphone. Can you buy it? I want to sell my old smartphone. Hii hapa ni ya kawaida. I want to sell, nataka kuuza my old smartphone. Old smartphone maana smart, smartphone ya zamani au smartphone ya kale au wakati mwingine ni ni sawa kusema ambayo imeshatumika old. Japo iliyotumika inaitwa used my used smartphone simu yangu ya au smartphone yangu iliyotumika lakini hapa smartphone yangu ya zamani my old smartphone I want to sell my old smartphone nataka kuuza smartphone yangu ya zamani can you buy it can you buy it unaweza kuinunua can you buy peke yake inamaanisha unaweza kununua it ile hiyo hii yenyewe na kadhalika so can you buy it can you buy it unaweza kuinunua kwa hiyo unaweza kununua kitu ambacho hutaki kukitaja kimoja itakuwa it can you buy it unaweza kuinunua kama ingekuwa ni amba, ambayo ni kama ingekuwa gari ungesema unaweza kulinunua ungetumia vile vile can you buy it kama ingekuwa nyumba unaweza kuinunua can you buy it 
na kadhalika. Kwa hiyo hapa uta, utakuwa makini kujua kwamba hii it iliyotumika hapa ina, inasimamia kile ambacho kwa Kiswahili tunasema kuki nunua kuinunua bila kutaja jina la kitu husika. I want to sell my old smartphone. Can you buy it? Nataka kuuza smartphone yangu ya zamani. Unaweza kuinunua? Asa jibu lingine hapa ni sorry. Kwa hiyo hapa umekataa lakini bila kutumia neno no. Umesema tusamahani au ninasikitika. Sorry, I can't buy it. Siwezi kuinunua. Ambapo ungeza kusema I can't buy your old smartphone. Siwezi kununua smartphone yako ya zamani. Lakini haya maneno yote umeameza kwa kutumia it kwa sababu kinachozungumziwa tayari kinaeleweka ni kitu smartphone it inatosha kukiwakilisha. Sorry, I can't buy it. Hapa na maanisha samani siwezi kuinunua au ninasikitika siwezi kuinunua ambapo pia ongeza kuongeza maneno I am au I am ukasema I am sorry ninasikitika ila sorry pia ni kwa kifupi lakini na maisha kitu kile kile ninasikitika au samahani I can't buy it because kwa sababu I don't need utakumbuka na maanisha sihitaji I don't need another na maanisha nyingine au kingine au lingine smartphone smartphone tafsiri ya kawaida ya Kiswahili ni ni wengine wanasema simjanja lakini asilimia kubwa mtu kimwambia smartphone anaelewa ni nini unasema kwa hiyo another smartphone ni smartphone nyingine I don't need another smartphone sihitaji smartphone nyingine at the moment at the moment inamaanisha kwa wakati huu au kwa sasa au sasa kwa hiyo baada ya kutumia neno now unaweza kutumia at the moment hapa ungeza kusema I don't need another smartphone now Sihitaji sim nyingine smartphone nyingine sasa au sasa hivi. I don't need another smartphone now au I don't need another smartphone at the moment. Lakini pia the inaweza katoka ikatumika this. Kwa hiyo ikawa at this moment. Kwa hiyo at this moment au at the moment inamaanisha kwa wakati huu. Sorry, I can't buy it because I don't need another smartphone at the moment. Samahani au ninasikitika siwezi kuinunua kwa sababu sihitaji smartphone nyingine kwa wakati huu au sihitaji smartphone nyingine sasa twende mfano unaofuata Mfano unaofuata ni wapa ambao sio swali ni sentence tu ya moja kwa moja ambao nadhani ni rahisi pia kuielewa I know him but I don't have his phone number I know him. Ninamjua sasa him tayari utakuwa umejua kwamba anazunguziwa hapa ni wa kiume. Her wa I don't I know him. Ninamjua yeye wa kiume. Lakini hapa kwa mfano ungeweza kusema I know Peter. Ninamjua Peter. I know her. Ninamjua yeye wa I know Deborah. Ninamjua Deborah. I know it. Ninakijua au ninalijua. But lakini I don't have Sina his phone number namba yake ya simu lakini yake nani wa kiume his utakumbuka his kama nilivyokuambia kama ukiona hii pia hauelewi ni nini rudi kwenye somo la 12 kwa ukirudi kwenye somo la 12 lesson 12 utaelewa pia hivi vitu i know him but i don't have his phone number ninamjua lakini sina namba yake ya simu twende kwenye mfano unaofuata example 6 Fano number sita. Do you understand this language? Do you understand? Uta, ie nye tali naeleweka kama umekua makini kufatia masuma liopita. Do you understand? Unaelewa? Do you understand me? Unanielewa? Do you understand her? Unamuelewa yewa kike. Do you understand him? Unamuelewa yewa kiume. Do you understand them? Unawaelewa. Kwe uta hapu unezo kacheza pia them, him, her, na kathalika. This language inamaanisha lugha hii. This language. Koko pamoja, do you understand this language? Unaielewa lugha hii? Au wengine wanasema unaelewa lugha hii? Lugha ni it itawakilishwa na it kwa sababu si, haiko kwenye him wala ha kwa sababu sio binadamu. Yes, I understand it. Yes, I understand it. Yes, I understand it. Ndiyo ninaielewa kwa sababu ni lugha. Do you understand this language? Yes, I understand it. 
mwingine angeza kurudia ya maneno pia akatoa it akarudia tena this language do you understand the do you understand this language yes i understand this language lakini hii ina, inakokolea muda utakapokuwa umeshaelewa baada ya kurudia ya maneno unatumia it yes i understand it jibla no no i don't understand it no i don't understand it hapana sielewi what about you what about you inamaanisha vipi kuhusu wewe hapa what unaweza katoa ikawa how about you kwa ukisikia how about you au what about you inamaanisha vipi kuhusu wewe maana yake umeshasema mimi sielewi hii lugha au mimi sielewi vipi kuhusu wewe ambayo inamaanisha je wewe unaielewa Do you understand this language? Yes, I understand it. No, I don't understand it. What about you? Twende katika mfano namba saba. ambao kwa upande wa wa namba inatakiwa kimsingi iwe imeshazidi namba saba kwa sababu namba nyingine zimejirudia. Do you need us in your business? Do you need us? Kwa kwa do you need us? Do you need us in your business? Do you need us in your business? Inamaanisha unatuhitaji katika biashara yako. Do you need? Peke yake inamaanisha unahitaji. Do you need us? Unatuhitaji ambao unaweza kusema pia unatuhitaji sisi au je unatuhitaji sisi? Do you need us in your business katika biashara yako au kwenye biashara yako? Lakini hii pia inaweza kumaanisha yenu in your business kat katika biashara yenu au kwenye biashara yenu Hapa majibu kwa sababu ni do you utakumbuka kuna yes na no ambapo ungeweza kusema yes I do no I don't Yes we need you we need you we na maanisha sisi we need you sisi tunakuhitaji wewe au sisi tunawahitaji nini ninyi au nyinyi we need you tunawahitaji kwa sababu swali hapa ni do you need us mnatuhitaji au unatuhitaji Yes, we need you. Ndio tunawahitaji. Ingekuwa ndio ninakuhitaji ingekuwa yes I need you. Ndio ninawahitaji. Lakini we ni sisi kwa hiyo ndio tunawahitaji in our business katika biashara yetu. Ndio tunawahitaji katika biashara yetu au ndio tunawahitaji kwenye biashara yetu. No, we don't need you in our business. Hapana hatuwahitaji katika biashara. Don't need you in our business. Hapana tuwahitaji katika biashara yetu. Namna nyingine pia ni ambayo ungeweza kutumia yes I think I need your support au kutumia neno contribution in my business. Tuangalie vizuri ikipengele cha mwisho. Kepa yes I think I need your support or contribution in my business. Kwa tukienda taratibu I think ni nadhani au ninafikiria. I need ninahitaji your support inamaanisha support yenu kama ambavyo kwa Kiswahili wanasema your support au msaada wenu na vitu kama hivyo. Contribution inamaanisha mchango. Kwa your contribution mchango wenu. Kunaweza kusema I think I need your support. Nadhani ninahitaji support yako au nadhani ninahitaji support yenu. Ila neno support ukiachana nalo kama utumie contribution itakuwa I think I need your contribution. Nadhani au nafikiri au nafikiria ninahitaji mchango wako au mchango wenu in my business katika biashara yangu. Kwa utafanya mazoezi I think I need your support. Nadhani nahitaji msaada wako. Nadhani nahitaji msaada wenu. Nadhani nahitaji support yako. Au nadhani nahitaji support yenu ili uweze kuwa vizuri kichwani. I think I need your contribution. Nadhani nahitaji mchango wako. Au nadhani nahitaji mchango wenu in my business katika biashara yangu. Jambo la msingi baada ya kuona sasa mifano yote hii ni mazoezi binafsi. Mwanzo mpaka mwisho ukirudia au ukichukua haya maneno kuyapeleka kwenye masomo 15 yaliyopita ili utengeneze kitu kikubwa zaidi. Tumalizeni na vipengele ambavyo pia vitakusaidia kuona namna ya kutumia yale maneno ambayo tumekusha kuyaona him, her, it, you, me, us, them. Kwa hapa 
listen to me listen to me inamaanisha nisikilize kama unamwambia watu wengi itamaanisha nisikilizeni au nisikilizeni mimi listen to me ambapo sasa hapa mazoezi yako ni ya kubadilisha hili neno me listen to me nisikilize mimi listen to her msikilize yeye au msikilizeni yeye listen to her listen to him msikilizeni yeye wa kiume au msikilize yeye wa kiume listen to him listen to it usikilize au lisikilize au kisikilize listen to it kwa mfano kama ni wimbo usikilize listen to it listen to them wasikilize au wasikilizeni listen to us tusikilize au tusikilizeni vile vile itakuja hapa wait for me wait for me ni ngoje au nisubiri au wengine wanasema nisubirie wait for me wait for them wasubiri au wangoje wait for her msubiri wait for him msubiri wa kiume wait for it kisubiri au lisubiri na wait for us tusubiri sisi twende kwenye hii hapa repeat after me repeat after me inamaanisha rudia baada yangu au baada ya mimi repeat after me repeat after me rudia baada yangu au rudia baada ya mimi mi utaitoa repeat after her rudia baada yake repeat after him rudia baada yake wa kiume repeat after it rudia baada yake kitu na ya pa dance with me dance with me dance with me cheza na mimi lakini cheza ina maana ya mziki dance with me dance with me cheza pamoja na mimi dance with her cheza pamoja naye wa kike dance with him cheza pamoja naye wa kiume dance with it cheza nacho au cheza nalo cheza naye kitu dance with us cheza pamoja nasi dance with them cheza pamoja nao na kadhalika kwa hiyo hapa baada ya kuona pale pote ambapo ulikuwa unaweza kuitumia mi ufanye mazoezi ya kutumia haya maneno mengine niliyokupa lakini pia ukiwa unaweka tafsiri yake kichwani na kuielewa vizuri kwa hiyo baada ya kuona kila kitu ambacho tulitakiwa kiona katika hili somo na na kuziona sentensi zote na maelezo nitafanya tu marudio kwa ufupi nikitaja nikisoma tu sentensi na nikisoma kwa Kiingereza tu ili uone ili nikusaidie kuona kwamba wapi unakumbuka wapi umesahau ili ujue wapi unatakiwa kufanya marudio au ni kitu gani pia unaweza ukatakiwa kuuliza kwenye comments ambacho hujakielewa vizuri kuhusiana hili somo number one, do you love me yes i love you and to be honest i love you more than i love myself no i don't love you at all just try to understand me number two, Do you love Peter? Yes, I love him. No, I don't love him. Three. Do you know these people? Yes, I know them. No, I don't know them. Number two. Can you teach me how to write a job application later? Sure. What time can I teach you? Three. Do you have anything to tell us? Yes, I have something to tell you. No, I don't have anything to tell you. Four. I want to sell my old smartphone. Can you buy it? Sorry, I can't buy it because I don't need another smartphone at the moment. Five. I know him but I don't have his phone number. I know him but I don't have his phone number. Six. Do you understand this language? Yes, I understand it. No, I don't understand it. What about you? Seven. Do you need us in your business? Yes, we need you in our business. No, we don't need you in our business. Yes, I think I need your support or your contribution in my business. Listen to me. Wait for me. Repeat after me. Dance with me. Hello, karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la 17. Lesson 17 na lesson 17 ni sehemu ya kwanza ya somo hili 
Somo hili itachukua somo la 17 yani lesson 17 na somo la 18 lesson 18. Kwa hiyo hapa tutaona sehemu ya kwanza yani part 1 ambapo tuna jumla ya mifano mitano kwa namba lakini ndani ya kila mfano tutakuwa tuna sentence kadhaa za kufafanua kile ambacho tutakiona tutakapokuwa tumeshaanza kupata maelezo rasmi ya kipengele hiki cha kwanza au sehemu ya kwanza part 1. Somo letu kwa ujumla litakuwa linahusu yafuatayo. Somo letu litahusu matumizi ya I, you, he, she, it, we pamoja na they katika sentensi mbalimbali za Kiingereza. Ambapo I inamaanisha mimi, you inamaanisha wewe, he inamaanisha yeye wa kiume, she inamaanisha yeye wa kike, it inamaanisha yeye kama ni mnyama au chenyewe lenyewe kama ni kitu. We inamaanisha sisi na they inamaanisha wao. Kwa hiyo tutaona namna ambavyo haya maneno yanatumika tofauti tofauti katika sentence tofauti yakimaanisha vitu tofauti kama ambavyo nimesema kwa Kiswahili lakini pia inatumika vipi ili yakupe ile sentence unayotaka kwa Kiingereza kutoka kwenye Kiswahili lakini pamoja na hayo katika somo hili tutaona kitu kingine ambacho ni cha msingi sana tutaona ni wapi katika maneno naongeza es au wapi y inabadilika kwenda kwenye i es au wapi katika neno unaongeza s unapokuwa umetumia he, she na it. Kwa hiyo tutaona namna ambavyo haya mabadiliko katika neno linaloenda pamoja na he, she na it yanafanyika. Kwa hiyo wapi unatakiwa uweke es, wapi unatakiwa uweke i es, wapi unatakiwa uweke s unapotumia he, she pamoja na it. Lakini pia tutaangalia namna ya kutumia does, lakini pia pamoja na kutumia doesn't katika sentence za Kiingereza pale inapotumika he she pamoja na it lakini kwa part 1 tuone part 1 ina nini part 1 ya somo hili ina haya yafuatayo part 1 part 1 au Kiswahili sehemu ya kwanza part 1 part 1 tutachukua ya maneno i you we pamoja na they kwa hiyo part ya pili itakuwa ina he she pamoja na it kwa hiyo kama hiki kipengele cha kwanza au sehemu ya kwanza part 1 utaielewa vizuri basi utakapoingia katika sehemu ya pili hautapata changamoto yoyote ya kujua unaoanisha vipi sehemu ya kwanza pamoja na sehemu ya pili Kwa hiyo tuangalie haya maneno haya maneno manne i you we pamoja na they Kimsingi i na you tumeziona mara nyingi sana kuanzia somo la kwanza mpaka somo la 16. Kwa hiyo mpaka sasa hivi angalau kwa i na you una mwanga mkubwa kama ambavyo tutaona katika matumizi yake kupitia hii mifano. Sasa tutakuwa tunatumia we pamoja na they katika hizo hizo sentence ambazo tutaziona zimetumia i na you. Kwa hiyo tutaona kwa upana namna gani unaweza kutumia haya maneno mawili ili kupata sentence zinazohitaji we pamoja na they. Tuanze na mfano wetu wa kwanza ambao ni huu ufuatao. Mfano wetu wa kwanza ni huu hapa, au example one, I think au pia unaweza kusema I think that. Unaweza kusema I think au I think that. I think ina maana nadhani au ninafikiri au ninafikiria that ina maana kwamba au kuwa. Kwa hiyo I think, I think that ina maana nadhani kwamba au nadhani kuwa, nafikiri kwamba, nafikiri kuwa I want money. Kwa unaweza kusema I think I want money au kasema I think that I want money. I think I want money inamaanisha ninadhani ninataka pesa. I think that I want money inamaanisha ninadhani kwamba ninataka pesa au ninadhani kuwa ninataka pesa. Sasa katika hii sentensi ya kwanza hii hapa tutaangalia mabadiliko yanaweza kufanyika kwenye I pamoja na we. Kwa sababu tuna mani, eh, kwenye kwenye I hii hapa na I hii hapa ili tutumie you tumie we pamoja na they ili kupata sasa sentensi inayoelezea watu wengine au kuwakilisha watu wengine tofauti. Tuangalie mfano wa mabadiliko yanayoweza kufanyika. Kwa mfano hapa kwenye i unaweza kaweka they ikawa they think. Badala ya i think tukawa na they think ambayo inamaanisha wanadhani. Lakini hili neno that pia ukilileta hapa itakuwa they think that ambayo inamaanisha wanadhani kwamba ambapo they unakumbuka kwamba ni wao 
Kwa hiyo unaweza kusema pia wao wanadhani they think wao wanadhani kwamba they think that lakini tukishasema tu wanadhani tu, tayari unajua kwamba walio waliowakilishwa hapo ni wao. They think we want we want ina maanisha tunataka utakumbuka we ina maanisha sisi. Kwa hiyo we want ni sawa na tunataka au pia ukisema sisi tunataka ni kitu kimoja. Sisi tunataka we want they they are money. They are money utakumbuka na maanisha pesa yao. Kama matumizi ya they are au ya jui utafuatilia masomo yaliyopita utaona inamaanisha nini na pia maneno mengine yanayoelekeana na hili neno. They are money pesa yao. Kwa hiyo we want they are money tunataka pesa yao au tunataka hela yao hata ukisema kwa wingi pia tunataka hela zao kwa sababu pesa hapa haina wingi iko tu katika umoja lakini katika Kiswahili tunasema pesa zetu pesa zangu hela zangu hela zako lakini kwa Kiingereza haitakuwa na wingi kama Kiswahili kwa hiyo their money pesa yao au hela yao au pesa zao na kadhalika mfano mzima sasa unakuwa hivi mfano mzima hapa unakuwa they think we want their money they think we want their money. Hamna maanaisha wanadhani tunataka pesa yao. Lakini hii hapa they are ingetoka ingekuwa sawa sawa na sentence hii hapa ambayo inasema I think I want money ikawa they think we want money ambapo itakuwa wanadhani tunataka pesa. Kwa hiyo utaona kwamba umebadilisha haya maneno I na hii I kwa kuweka they pamoja na na we ukapata sentence tofauti inayoelezea watu tofauti. Ninadhani ninataka pesa. I think I want money wanadhani wanataka pesa they think wanadhani tunataka pesa they think we want money kunaweza kubadilisha haya maneno lakini pia kuweka maelezo mengine tofauti tuangalie pia sehemu nyingine ni hii hapa we we think you don't want our money we think you don't want our money we think sasa hapa inamaanisha tunadhani kwa tumetoka i think ni nadhani they think wanadhani we think tunadhani tunadhani you don't want hautaki wewe hautaki you don't want our money our money ina maanisha pesa yetu we think you don't want our money tunadhani hautaki pesa yetu au tunadhani wewe hautaki pesa yetu lakini pia bado ungeendelea kufanya mabadiliko mengine zaidi kwa mfano hapa ilipowekwa you ukaweka they kwa kusema kwamba hii they kwa mfano ikawa hapa kwa kusema we think they don't want our money ambayo ingemaanisha tunadhani hawataki pesa yetu tunadhani hawataki pesa yetu au hawataki hela yetu A, au pia ungeweza kusema tunadhani wao hawataki hela yetu sasa hayo ni mazoezi binafsi ambayo natakiwa kuyafanya kwa unaweza kuchukua i ukafanya mazoezi kwa kutumia you kwa kutumia we kwa kutumia they kwa kuweka mabadiliko tofauti hapa hapa ukaweka i hapa ukaweka we vivyo vyote vile ambavyo unaweza kufanya lakini sentence ziwe zina maana ambayo inaeleweka kwa Kiswahili. Kwa hiyo hayo ni mazoezi binafsi yatakayokufanya uelewe matumizi sahihi ya we you pamoja na i katika sentence za Kiingereza. Unaweza kutumia mfano huu au ukaenda kwenye masomo yaliyopita ukabadilisha badilisha mpaka uelewe vizuri kabisa matumizi ya hayo maneno katika sentence za Kiingereza. Twende katika mfano wa pili pia utakao tusaidia kujifunza. Mfano wetu wa pili ni huu hapa. Huu hapa. Wa pili, they need their own business. They need their own business. They need their own business. Ina maanisha wanataka biashara yao wenyewe. Their own ina maanisha yao wenyewe. Our own yetu wenyewe. My own yangu mwenyewe. Kwa hiyo ukisema my own business inamaanisha biashara yangu mwenyewe. Their own business biashara yao wenyewe. Her own business biashara yake mwenyewe wa kike. His own business biashara yake mwenyewe wa kiume. Kwa hivyo ni vitu vyote unavyoweza kufanya kwa kuchukua kile unachojifunza hapa kukipeleka kwenye masomo mengine utakutana na maneno mengine tofauti tofauti ya kusaidia kupata sa kitu kikubwa zaidi ya kile ambacho unakiona hapa. They need wanahitaji. Utakumbuka I need ninahitaji. Kwa hiyo ukitoa I ukaweka they unapata wanahitaji. Ukitoa they ukaweka we unapata we need. We need tunahitaji. You need unahitaji. Kwa hiyo unaona kwamba unaweza kupata namna ya kuelezea watu tofauti tofauti kwa kutumia kile ambacho ulijifunza katika masomo yaliyopita ambapo tulikuwa tunacheza sana na I na you ili kwanza upate msingi sasa 
Kwa hiyo hapo unaanza kupata picha kubwa kwamba una, una I, una they, una you, una we na hishi na iti tutakazoziona katika somo linalofuata. Sasa hapa mabadiliko, mfano wa mabadiliko ni huu hapa. I need kutoka kwenye they need. I need my own inamaanisha yangu mwenyewe. My own. Hapa tumeona their own yao au yao wenyewe. Kwa hiyo my own business inamaanisha biashara yangu mwenyewe. I need my own business. Ninahitaji biashara yangu mwenyewe. Kwa utatoa I utaweka we. We need our own business. Tunahitaji biashara yetu wenyewe na kadhalika. Kama utataka kusema biashara zetu hapo utaongeza ES itakuwa businesses. We need our own businesses. Tunahitaji biashara zetu wenyewe. Twende katika mfano wa tatu. Mfano wa tatu ni huu hapa ambao unaanza na we. Example 3, we don't understand you. We don't understand you. Ambapo utakumbuka hapo ukiweka i na kuwa i don't understand you inamaanisha sikuelewi. Kwa hiyo kama hiyo ulielewa vizuri, I don't understand you, hapa upati changamoto yoyote kwa sababu unatoa i, unaweka we na kuwa mimi sikuelewi. I don't understand you. Kwa hiyo we ambayo ni sisi itakuwa sisi hatukuelewi. We don't understand you hatukuelewi au sisi hatukuelewi lakini pia hapo unaweza kusema sisi hatukuelewi wewe we don't understand you lakini pia you unakumbuka kwamba inamaanisha nyinyi kwa itakuwa we don't understand you kwa sehemu nyingine inamaanisha hatuwaelewi hatuwaelewi we don't understand you hatuwaelewi au hatuelewi nyinyi lakini hapa unaweza kusema pia i don't we don't understand them kwa hiyo hapa kwenye you katoa you kaweka them We don't understand them. We don't understand them. Hatuwaelewi. We don't understand him. Kama utakumbuka sasa him her katika somo masomo yaliyopita, we don't understand her. Hatumuelewi yeye wa kike. Hatumuelewi. We don't understand her. We don't understand him. Hatumuelewi yeye wa kiume. Na twende na tuone namna nyingine ya, ya kuweza kubadilisha sentence namba tatu ambapo tutaona hapa chini ambapo tuna sentence hapa they don't understand us at the moment but we can try to convince them for the second time they don't understand us hapo inamaanisha hawatuelewi us tutakumbuka ni sisi lakini inapotumika baada ya kitendo they don't understand us kama uelewi namna inavyotumika us them him her utaenda kwenye masomo yaliyopita utaona vizuri kabisa namna ilivyokuwa inatumika na kuelezewa kwa kina they don't understand us hawatuelewi hawatuelewi they don't understand us at the moment inamaanisha kwa wakati huu au kwa sasa lakini ambapo pia kama ulifuatia kwa makini masomo yaliyopita nilisema kwamba at the moment ina, ina ni sawa sana kusema at this moment kwa at the moment au at this moment inamaanisha wakati huu au kwa wakati huu hiki kipande kinakuwa they don't understand us at the moment au they don't understand us at this moment hawatuelewi kwa wakati huu hawatuelewi kwa wakati huu au, au hawatuelewi sasa au sasa hivi but lakini we can try inamaanisha tunaweza kujaribu we can try i can try ninaweza kujaribu we can try tunaweza kujaribu We can try to convince inamaanisha kushawishi to convince them kuwashawishi to convince them kuwashawishi lakini pia kama uko makini haya maeneo yenye them yenye we yote yanaweza kufanywa mabadiliko ukapata vitu tofauti tofauti kwa ni swala la mazoezi binafsi to convince them inamaanisha kuwashawishi to convince them we can try to convince them tunaweza kujaribu kuwashawishi for the second time For the second time ina maanisha kwa mara ya pili. Second time mara ya pili. For the second time kwa mara ya pili. They don't understand us at the moment but we can try to convince them for the second time. Hawatuelewi kwa sasa lakini tunaweza kujaribu kuwashawishi kwa mara ya pili. Twende katika mfano mwingine ambao ni mfano namba 4. Mfano namba 4 au mfano namba 4. Example 4 example 4 ambapo ni yapa don't do they want to see me do they want to see me ambapo ni swali utakumbuka hapa do you want to see me do you want to see me ilikuwa inamaanisha 
unataka kuniona au unataka kuniona mimi do you want to see me kwa kilicho kilichobadilika ni kwamba pale ilipo ka you inaweza kuja i ikaja they ikaja we do they want to see me inayomaanisha wanataka kuniona mimi au je wanataka kuniona mimi au pia je wao wanataka kuniona mimi do they want to see me jibu hapo utakumbuka kwamba kwa ufupi ikiwa ni, ni do hapa ilikuwa ni nilisema kama ni do you unaweza kusema yes i do no i don't lakini pia hata do they inakuwa vile vile yes i do yes they do no they don't kwa hiyo hapo ungeweza kusema yes they do no they don't lakini tutaangalia namna ya kujibu kwa urefu ambapo utasema yes they want to see you yes they want to see you do they want to see me wanataka kuniona yes they want to see you ndio wanataka kukuona do you want to see me unataka kuniona yes i want to see you ndio ninataka kukuona do we want to see them hapo kutoa mimi ukaeka them do we want to see them tunataka kuwaona yes we want to see them ndio tunataka kuwaona au no we don't want to see them na kadhalika kama utafanya mazoezi kwa bidii na kuangalia pia tuchoko unafanya kwenye masomo yaliyopita utapata shida. Kwa hapa ingekuwa no ungesema no they don't want to see you. No they don't want to see you. Twende katika mfano wetu wa mwisho ambao ni mfano nambari 5. Example 5. Mfano wa tano ni huu hapa. Why don't they want to give me my money? Why don't they want to give me my money? Why don't they want to give me my money? Inamaanisha kwa nini hawataki kunipa hela yangu? Hapa tuna don't. Tumezoea why do you? Why do you kwa nini? Why do you want kwa nini unataka? Lakini ikiwa why don't you want? Sababu hapo inakuwa imekanushwa itakuwa kwa nini hautaki? Why don't you want? Sasa hapa you nafasi yake imechukuliwa na they kwa utakuwa why don't they want why don't they want kwa nini hawataki kisha kuna unakuwa na maelezo ya ziada ambapo kwa hapa tuna to give me my money to give me my money inamaanisha kunipa hela yangu au kunipa pesa yangu why don't they want to give me my money kwa nini hawataki kunipa pesa yangu lakini pia hata hapa kwenye they ungeza kubadilisha kwa mfano they kabadisha pamoja na hapa why don't we want to give them hapa kwenye me them their money why don't we want to give them their money Ina, inayomaanisha kwa nini hatutaki kuwapa hela yao au kwa nini hatutaki kuwapa wao hela yao kwa hiyo kama umekuwa makini kuanzia namba moja mpaka namba 4 utajua kwamba hapa kuna mahali ambapo wewe binafsi unaweza kufanya mabadiliko yako na ukapata kitu kikubwa zaidi Why don't they want to give me my money? Kwa nini hawataki kunipa hela yangu? Majibu yanaweza kuwa kama ifuatavyo. Jibu moja wapo inaweza kuwa hili hapa. They don't want to give you your money because you don't have a bank account. They don't want to give you your money because you don't have a bank account. Kwa hapa ni bank wengine watamka bank kwa ukisikia bank account au bank account bank account bank account ni account ya bank bank account bank account account ya bank ambapo sasa katika maelezo yanasema they don't want ambayo inamaanisha hawataki to give you kukupa your money pesa yako because kwa sababu you don't have hauna a bank account au a bank account Tumetumia A kwa sababu ni benki account moja. Ingekuwa kama hauna account za benki, ingekuwa because you don't have bank accounts. Because you don't have bank accounts. They don't want to give you your money because you don't have bank accounts. Lakini hapa hawataki kukupa hela yako, hawataki kukupa pesa yako kwa sababu hauna account ya benki. Kwa hiyo baada ya kuona haya mabadiliko yote yanayoweza kufanyika katika sentence tofauti tofauti kwa kutumia i, you, we pamoja na they tutaangalia tena marudio ya hii mifano yote nitaisoma kwa Kiingereza tu kuanzia mwanzo mpaka mwisho 
na utakuwa unafuatilia kuona kama unakumbuka kile ambacho umejifunza. Kutuanzia moja kwa moja hapa chini ya haya maneno are you with they lakini pia ha, are you with they yanafanana sana katika matumizi kwa pale ambapo i itakuwa inatumika na vile inavyotumika kwa asilimia kubwa you we na they itaweza kutumika vile vile tofauti tu itakuwa katika maana tuanze na number one number one i think that i want money au i think i want money inafuata they think we want their money We think you don't want our money. Number two. Tuna kwenye number mbili. Number two. They need their own business. I need my own business. Number three. We don't understand you. They don't understand us at the moment, but we can try to convince them for the second time. Number four. Do they want to see me? Yes, they want to see you. Number five. Why don't they want to give me my money? They don't want to give you your money because you don't have a bank account. Hello, karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la 18, lesson 18. Na hili somo la 18 ni mwendelezo wa somo hili kwa sababu tayari tumeshaona sehemu ya kwanza, yani part 1 katika somo la 17 na hapa tunaendelea na part 2. Na somo letu hili linahusu matumizi ya I, you, he, she, it, we pamoja na they katika sentensi mbalimbali za Kiingereza. Na sehemu ya kwanza tuliona matumizi ya I, we, you pamoja na they, lakini katika part 2 tutaona matumizi ya he, she pamoja na it. Pia tutaona wapi ambapo unaweza kaongeza es katika maneno ambayo yanaenda pamoja na hii shina it katika sentensi lakini pia tutaangalia ni wapi ambapo unaweza kubadili y kwenda kwenye ies katika sentensi au katika vitendo au maneno ambayo yanaenda yanaenda pamoja na shina it katika lakini pia tuna wapi ambapo tunaweza kaongeza s peke yake katika sentensi za Kiingereza hasa katika maneno yanayofuatana na hii shi pamoja na mwisho tutaangalia matumizi ya does pamoja na doesn't katika sentensi za Kiingereza zikiambatana na yake haya maneno yakiambatana na he she pamoja na it katika sentensi na haya maneno mawili tutayaona kwa upande wa kuuliza na kujibu maswali katika sentensi za Kiingereza. Asa tuanze moja kwa moja na kipengele hiki cha pili. Tuanze moja kwa moja na kipengele tulicho nacho katika somo la 18. Jambo la msingi ni umakini. Kama kipengele cha kwanza cha somo la 17 ulikielewa vizuri basi hapa nadhani hakutakuwa na shida yoyote. Utaelewa vizuri pia. I Utakumbuka ilikuwa na maanisha mimi. You na maanisha wewe au nyinyi. He ina maanisha yeye wa kiume. She na maanisha yeye wa kike. It ina maanisha yeye pamoja na vitu vyote yani wanyama yeye kama ni mnyama na vitu vyote ambavyo si binadamu lakini kwa kitu kimoja we inamaanisha sisi lakini they inamaanisha wao sasa twende moja kwa moja kwenye part 2 na part 2 kama nilivyosema inahusu matumizi ya hii matumizi ya she pamoja na matumizi ya it lakini katika matumizi ya haya maneno kuna vitendo ambavyo katika sentensi za kawaida za Kiingereza kama ambazo tumekuwa tukiona kwa mfano sentensi kama i go tutaangalia ni, ni kwa nini kwenye she imekuwa goes badala ya she go kwa sababu tunaona kuna maneno ma, kuna kuna hizi herufi mbili hizi ambazo zina nyeusi iliyokolea es imeongezeka kwenye hili neno go kwa kawaida hapo ungekuta kuna i alafu hapa kuna go i go ninakwenda sasa tuone kwa nini hapa tumeweka she goes kuna kanuni ya kuzingatia katika mabadiliko ya yanayosababisha uongeze es katika kitendo ambacho kinaenda pamoja na hii She pamoja na it. 
pale ambapo kitendo kinaishia na o au kinaishia na s h au kinaishia na c h au kinaishia na x au kinaishia z au kinaishia double s yani manaki s mbili hicho kitendo utakiongezea herufi mbili e pamoja na s mwishoni kama tutakavyoona katika hii mifano tulionayo kwa hiyo kumbuka neno likishia o likishia s h lakini kiwe kitendo sio neno lolote tu litakalofuatana na shi pamoja na na, na na hii na it ila ni kitendo kwa hiyo kitendo kitakachoishia o kitakachoishia s h kitakachoishia c h kitakachoishia x kitakachoishia z na kitakachoishia double s kalili hivi vipengele ndicho kitendo utakachokiongezea es kwa maneno peke yake yanayoishia na hivi vitu tulivyoona o ch sh ch x z pamoja na double s ndio tu utakayoongezea es mwishoni tuangalie moja kwa moja kwenye mifano nini kimefanyika kwa kufuata hayo maelezo niliyotoa hapo juu tuanze na mfano wa kwanza ambao ni huu hapa she goes She goes to his office every day. She goes to his office every day. Kwa mfano, hapa tungetoa she goes tukarudi kwenye sentence tulizozoea. Ningeweza kusema I go to his office every day. I go to his office every day. Inaomaanisha ninakwenda ofisini kwake, kwake lakini wa kiume his. I go to his office every day. Nakwenda ofisini kwake kila siku. Lakini ningekuwa na ofisi ninayoiendea ni ya mwanamke ningesema I go to her office every day. Maana yake ninakwenda ofisini kwake kila siku lakini ofisi ya mwanamke. Sasa kama unavyoweza kuona hili neno go linaishiwa na o. Kwa hiyo kanuni yetu inasema kama kitendo kinaishiwa na o hapa taongeza es. Kwa hiyo she goes she goes to his office every day. Kwa hiyo vile vile hapa ingekuwa e, hapa kwenye she ungeza kusema he goes au it goes she goes it goes i go we go they go Mfano wa pili He does business 24 7 24 ni 24 7 ni 7 Hapa I do business ingemaanisha ninafanya biashara. I do business. I do business ninafanya biashara. Lakini he does inamaanisha anafanya kwa sababu do inaishia na o. Kwa hiyo tunaongeza es. He does, she does, it does. Kwa hiyo he does business inamaanisha anafanya biashara lakini wa kiume. He does. Wa kike she does business anafanya biashara. Wa kike au yeye anafanya biashara wa kike ni she wa kiume ni hii kwa hiyo he does business 24/7 maana yake inamaanisha anafanya biashara saa 24 za siku siku saba za wiki kwa saa 24 siku saba za wiki ambayo inamaanisha anafanya biashara kila wakati usiku na mchana saa 24 za siku siku saba za wiki he does business 24/7 Twende kwenye mfano mwingine unaofuata. Mfano unaofuata ni huu hapa. Example 3 mfano wa tatu. She washes. Utaona kwamba hapa tumeongeza es kwa sababu kuna sh. Sh inaishia hiki kitendo cha wash. She washes, kwa utasema she washes au she does. She washes au she does. Does tayari inaeleweka kwamba inashia na ondo sasa tumeongeza es. She washes or she does the dishes. Hasa hapa dishes atakuongeza yes kwa sababu ni kitendo ila kwa sababu ni jina na dish kwa sababu inashia na sh pia katika wingi unaongeza es. Kwa kanuni inakuwa kama hii hii ya kuongeza yes kwenye vitendo vinavyofuatana na he she pamoja na it. She washes or she does the dishes every morning. Every morning inamaanisha kila asubuhi. Kwa she washes the dishes every morning. Anaosha vyombo kila asubuhi. Wash the dishes inamaanisha osha vyombo. 
au do the dishes inamaanisha osha vyombo. Kwa hiyo to do the dishes inamaanisha kuosha vyombo, to wash the dishes inamaanisha pia kuosha vyombo. Kwa she washes the dishes every morning, anaosha vyombo kila asubuhi. She does the dishes every morning, anaosha vyombo kila asubuhi. Lakini kama ungekuwa unataka kusema ninaosha vyombo kila asubuhi ungesema I do the dishes every morning au I wash the dishes every morning. Kwa hiyo pale ambapo ungetumia I, we, you pamoja na they, ES ungeitoa ikabaki kitendo cha kawaida ambacho ni wash na do. Kama kanuni inavyosema eh, kwa upande wa ES kwamba ni he, she na it peke yake ndivyo vitendo vyake vitaongezewa ES na C vinginevyo. Twende mfano wa nne example 4 ni hii hapa. He teaches he teaches English on YouTube. He teaches English on YouTube. Ambayo inamaanisha anafundisha Kiingereza kwenye YouTube. Ambapo kwa Kiswahili hatuna haja kusema kwenye ile tunasema tu anafundisha Kiingereza YouTube. Ile kwa Kiingereza utasema on. He teaches English on YouTube. Ambapo teach kwa sababu inaishia na CH tunaongeza ES kama kanuni inavyosema kwamba ni maneno yanayoishia na O SH CH X Z na double S utaongezea ES kwa hiyo he teaches English on YouTube na maana yake anafundisha Kiingereza YouTube lakini wakiume kama angekuwa kike ungesema she teaches English on YouTube lakini ukitaka kusema ninafundisha utasema I teach ES inaondoka au kama ukitaka kusema wanafundisha utasema they teach ES itaondoka pia twende mfano mwingine example 5 Example 5 inasema he fixes broken computers. He fixes broken computers. Ambayo inamaanisha anatengeneza kompyuta mbovu. Broken computers ni kompyuta mbovu au kompyuta zilizoharibika. Broken computers, kompyuta zilizoharibika. Kama ukitaka kusema labda madirisha yaliyoharibika utasema broken windows. Ukitaka kusema milango iliyoharibika utasema broken doors na kadhalika. Kwa hiyo kama anatengeneza mi, milango mibovu utasema he fixes broken doors. Twende kwenye neno letu la msingi ambalo ni fix. Fix inaongezewa es fixes. Fixes. Fixes he fixes. Ingekuwa kama ni ninatengeneza ungesema i fix. I fix. Ninatengeneza i fix broken computers. Ninatengeneza kompyuta mbovu. They fix broken computers. Wanatengeneza kompyuta mbovu. Lakini kwa sababu hapa kuna hii ndio sababu tunaongeza ES hapo mbele. Twende neno lingine au mfano mwingine namba 6. Example 6. It buzzes just like a bee. It buzzes just like a bee. It buzzes just like, like a bee. Buzz inamaanisha kutoa kisauti kidogo ambacho kina kinakuwa ni kama kile cha cha nyuki nyuki ambaye ni b kwa kama unajua ile sauti ya nyuki ndio hiyo buzz kwa hiyo it buzzes inamaanisha anatoa sauti kama ya nyuki ila just like a bee inamaanisha kama nyuki kama nyuki tu it buzzes just like a bee anatoa kisauti kidogo kile ambacho kinakuwa kina muendelezo kama nyuki tu it buzzes just like a bee lakini pia kitu cha msingi ni kwamba hapa pote ulipoona tunatumia tunatumia it, tunatumia he, tunatumia she, tunatumia he, she. Hapo unaweza kuweka majina ya watu na vitu. Kwa hiyo kwenye hii unaweza kuweka jina la kiume, kwenye she unaweza kuweka jina la kike, kwenye it unaweza kuweka jina la kitu chochote ikiwemo wanyama. Kwa hiyo hapa kwenye it unaweza kuweka mdudu yeyote ambaye anatoa sauti kama ya nyuki. Twende mfano wa mfano wa mwisho sasa kwa kipengele hiki hapa cha kuongeza ES ni mfano namba saba. Mfano namba saba au example seven. Example seven inasema she misses her family so much. She misses her family so much. She misses her family so much inamaanisha anai miss familia yake sana. Her family ha family familia yake lakini wa kike his family familia yake lakini wa kiume so much sana miss hapa kuna double s ndio sababu za es 
kama ambavyo hapa kuna z tumeongeza es kwa sababu kuna it ndivyo ambavyo pia hapa es imeongezeka kwa sababu ya double s kwenye miss she misses her family so much ana miss family yake sana lakini pia kumbuka ingekuwa unataka kusema ni i miss family yangu sana ungesema i miss my family so much usingesema i misses wala usingesema they misses wala usingesema you misses ungesema you miss they miss we miss lakini she misses her family she misses her family he misses her family na kadhalika kwa hii she na it ndio zitacheza na hii hapa ongezeko la es kwa hiyo kama umekuwa makini umeona kwamba maneno yale yote ambayo tumesema kwa maana shena yanatakiwa ongezewe es tumeona vile yanavyoishia tumeona double s tumeona double tumeona hapo z ambapo kuna double z tumeona x tumeona pia ambapo inaishia ch mahali ambapo inaishia sh mahali inapoishia o ande katika kitu kingine kinachotakiwa kufanyika unatumia hii shi pamoja na it kuna mabadiliko mengine pia unatakiwa uyafanye katika vitendo ambavyo vina vinaenda pamoja na hii na shi pamoja na it mahali ambapo utakuta neno neno linaishia na hiki kifuatacho mahali ambapo utakuta neno linaishia na consonant afu imemalizikia na y yani consonant kujumlisha y consonant ni herufi nyingine yoyote tofauti na a e i o u kwa hiyo herufi nyingine zote tofauti na a e i o u ndizo uzi ujue kwamba ni consonant au katika akili yako weke kwamba consonant ni herufi nyingine zozote tofauti na a e i o u kwa hiyo neno ambalo litakuwa linaishia na herufi tofauti na a e i o u afu likifuatiwa na y hilo neno utaondoa ile y utaweka i afu utaongeza es kwa takuwa i es badala ya y kama utakavyoona katika mifano lakini kanuni hii ya mabadiliko iwe tu pale utakapotumia hii she au it yani jina la kitu kimoja au jina la mtu mmoja awe wa kike au wa kiume sasa tuangalie hayo mabadiliko kupitia mfano wa kwanza she always cries for no reason she always cries for no reason ambayo inamaanisha mara zote au wakati wote huwa analia bila sababu for no reason inamaanisha bila sababu au wakati mwingine utasikia for no good reason au for no reason at all yote hiyo inamaanisha bila sababu bila sababu kwa for no reason bila sababu lakini hii hapa cries imetokana na neno cry kwa mfano i cry ninalia they cry wanalia lakini she cries she cries analia kwa hiyo pale kwenye y tumetoa y tumeongeza i e s kwa sababu hili hiki kitendo kimeenda pamoja na she she cries she cries she always cries for no reason she cries for no reason analia bila sababu she always cries for no reason wakati wote wa mara zote analia bila sababu kwa hapa pia hata kwenye she ungetoa ungeweka he cries for no reason au he always cries for no reason pia ongeza kuweka jina la mtu kwa mfano hapa Debra always cries for no reason Jane always cries for no reason na kadhalika twende katika mfano wetu wa pili mfano wetu wa pili hapa ni wapa he tries to do everything possible to help his son Sometimes he prays for his son. Hapa tries imetokana na try. Kwa I try ninajaribu. You try unajaribu. Kwa hiyo he tries he tries anajaribu au wengine wanasema yeye hujaribu. He tries to do everything possible. To do everything possible inamaanisha kufanya kila kitu kinachowezekana. He tries to do everything possible inamaanisha anajaribu kufanya kila kitu kinachowezekana to help his son. To help kusaidia his son mwanae wa kiume. Lakini his hapa inamaanisha yani huyu ni son ni mtoto wa kiume wa mwanaume. Angekuwa hasan angekuwa mwanae wa kiume lakini huyo ambaye anazungumziwa kuhusu mwana 
ni wa kike manake atakuwa ni mama wa mtoto Hassan mwanae wa kiume lakini akiwa ni mama his son mwanae wa kiume akiwa ni baba kwa he tries to to do everything possible to help his son anajaribu kufanya kila kinachowezekana au kufanya kila kitu kinachowezekana kumsaidia mwanae wa kiume sometimes wakati mwingine he prays anasali au anaomba he prays for his son sometimes he prays for his son wakati mwingine anaomba kwa ajili ya mwanae wa kiume lakini anaomba ni nani wa kiume he prays for his son hapa try hii neno try limebadilika kuwa tries ambapo tumeongeza ies lakini kuna neno pray limeishia na y kama tunavyoona lakini tumeongeza s peke yake badala ya kutoa y tukaweka ies kwa sababu gani y imetanguliwa na a au a na tumesema mahali ambapo ita, y itatanguliwa na a a e o u hatutabadilisha ile y kuwa ies inabidi itanguliwe na consonant kama hapa tulivyoona y imetanguliwa na r ndio sababu imekuwa ies kama tulivyoona ku cry imetanguliwa pia na r kwa tunabadilisha y kwenda ies inakuwa cries hapa try inakuwa tries lakini pray inakuwa pray bila kubadilisha y y inabaki vile vile kwa sababu imetanguliwa na a kwa ni, ni eneo pia ambalo litahitaji umakini hata utakapokutana na maneno mengine yanayofanana na haya twende kwenye neno letu lingine ambalo tutalikuta katika mfano namba tatu. Tuangalie mfano namba tatu au example 3. Example 3 hii hapa inasema he flies to the US twice a month. Hili neno flies limetokana na fly. Fly. Kwa hiyo he flies. Tunaona kwamba y imetanguliwa na l ambayo ni consonant. Kwa hiyo tuna uwezo wa kubadili y kwenda ies ndio sababu he flies to fly inamaanisha kupaa au kusafiri kwa ndege. Kwa hiyo he flies to the US. He flies to the US. Manake anasafiri kwa ndege kwenda Marekani. The US inamaanisha Marekani au kisikia the states au kisikia the United States inamaanisha Marekani. Kwa hiyo he flies to the US twice a month inamaanisha mara mbili kwa mwezi. He flies to the US twice a month. Anasafiri kwa ndege kwenda Marekani mara mbili kwa mwezi. Twende kipengele kingine ambacho ni hiki hapa. Hiki kipengele kinahusu kuongeza s peke yake wala sio kubadilisha y kwenda ies wala sio ku wala sio kuongeza es ni kuongeza s peke yake kama tunavyoona tuangalie mfano wetu wa kwanza ambao ni huu hapa mfano wetu wa kwanza example 1 inasema she loves you that's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns she loves you that's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns kwa hapa tunaona kwamba yale maneno yote ambayo either hayaishi na hayaishi na y ambayo imetanguliwa na consonant au maneno ambayo hayaishi na o ch sh x z na double s ambazo zina kanuni yake maalum maneno mengine yote aliyobaki itakuwa unaongeza s peke yake kama tunavyoona hapa love imekuwa loves she loves kwa mfano i love you ninakupenda she loves you anakupenda yeye wa kike au he loves you anakupenda yeye wa kiume kwa she loves you anakupenda huyu wa kike anakupenda wewe she loves you that's why that's why inamaanisha ndio maana she wants anataka utakumbuka kwamba kwa kawaida ukitaka kusema ninataka unasema i want bila kuongeza s ila kwa hii she na it utaongeza s she wants anataka he wants anataka yeye wa kiume it wants anataka yeye kama ni mnyama au kinataka kama ni kitu to tell you kukwambia the truth ukweli about kuhusu everything kila kitu she owns anamiliki to own inamaanisha kumiliki kwa mfano i own many things ninamiliki vitu vingi she owns anamiliki kwa hiyo 
she she loves you that's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns inamaanisha anakupenda ndio maana anataka kukwambia ukweli kuhusu kila kitu anamiliki lakini kwa kawaida kwa kiswahili tunasema kila kitu anachomiliki au kila kitu ambacho anamiliki twende katika mfano wa pili nadhani hiki ni kipengele rahisi zaidi kuliko vingine ambavyo tumeviona hapo juu ambavyo vinahitaji umakini sana kwa sababu hapa upande wa kuongeza S2 sio shida namba 2 on number 2 example 2 he knows how to play a guitar he knows how to play a guitar kwa tunaona hapa hamna vile viashiria vya kuongeza es wala kubadilisha y kwenda ies kwa hiyo tunaenda moja kwa moja tunapachika s he knows how to play a guitar anajua namna ya kucheza gitaa lakini kucheza gitaa sasa kwa kiswahili tunasema kupiga gitaa kuna wengine ambao wanasema kabisa kucheza gitaa sababu to play inamaanisha kucheza kama vile ambavyo mchezaji mpira wa miguu anasema to play football na kadhalika kwa to play a guitar pia ni kucheza gitaa ambayo si tunasema kupiga gitaa kwa he knows how to play a guitar anajua namna ya kupiga gitaa he knows she knows i know ninajua i know i know how to play a guitar ninajua namna ya kupiga gitaa lakini sisi pia hata ili haya maneno mawili how to how to yetu mimi tunasema tuninajua kupiga gitaa i know how to play a guitar lakini kwa kiingereza lazima utasema namna ya ninajua namna ya kupiga japo kwa kiswahili tunajua tuna, tunasema ninajua kupiga twende katika mfano mwingine jambo pia la msingi ni kwamba hapo unaweza kutoa hii ukaweka jina au ukasema kwa mfano my friend knows my friend knows rafiki yangu anajua lakini ukiweka wingi itakuwa my friends sasa my friends inakuwa ni they kwa hiyo utasema my friends no my friend knows rafiki yangu anajua my friends no marafiki zangu wanajua twende namba tatu, mfano namba tatu, example 3 it helps me a lot it helps me na maanaisha inanisaidia kinanisaidia linanisaidia ananisaidia kama ni mnyama it helps me a lot a lot ina maanaisha sana au it helps me so much inanisaidia sana kinanisaidia sana it helps me a lot inanisaidia sana au kinanisaidia sana helps kwa sababu hapa p hizo herufi mbili za mwisho hazina kiashiria chochote cha kuongeza es wala kubadilisha y kwenda ies ndio sababu moja kwa moja tumepachika s it helps me a lot sasa twende na kipengele kinachofuata hiki pengele cha matumizi ya does na doesn't ambapo vya jume vilewa vizuri basi hiki hapa pia kitakupa shida yote kwa sababu ni rahisi tu tuanze na mfano wa kwanza mfano wa kwanza unasema hivi mfano wa kwanza ipo 1 huko hivi example 1 does she pay you well does she pay you well does she pay you well ambako pamoja na maanisha anakulipa vizuri au je yeye anakulipa vizuri lakini huyu anayekulipa ni wa kike does she pay you well kwa hiyo pale ambapo ukiwa kutumia kwa kawaida tulikuwa tumezoea kuna maswali ambayo ni do you kwa mfano do you pay me well unanilipa vizuri do you pay them well unawalipa vizuri lakini tunatoa do tunaweka does kwa upande wa he she na it na pale ilipokuwa you utatoa he she na it Uh, uta, na pale ilipokuwa you utaitoa you utaweka hii she na it au jina la kitu au mtu kwa mfano pay you well j j ni anakulipa vizuri kwa hiyo do isahau kwa upande wa hii na it weka does lakini pia you isahau kwa upande wa matumizi ya does utaweka hii she na it ku does she pay you well majibu yake kwa jibu la yes litategemea umeelewa vipi vile vipengele vitatu vya, vya kuongeza s es na kubadilisha y kwenda ies yes she pays me well yes she pays me well yes she pays me well lakini hapo utaangalia utaona kwamba kwenye jibu kuna pays kwenye swali kuna pay kwa hiyo ukitumia does kuuliza swali 
ili neno litabaki vile vile aliongezeki s wala alibadiliki chochote kama ni pay na baki pay kama ni go na back go kwenye majibu ndipo utakapofanya mabadiliko kwa upande wa Yesu utasema aba yes she goes yes she tries na kadhalika lakini kwa upande wa kuuliza swali jibu litabaki neno linabaki vile vile kama ambavyo liko katika hali yake ya kawaida kwa sababu it does tayari itatosha kuwakilisha kwamba kilichoitumika hapa ni hii she na it kwa kanuni ya kawaida lakini kwenye jibu pays ita, itasimama sasa kwa nafasi yake ya kile ambacho nilikuwa nakieleza katika hatua za awali. Yes, she pays me well. Ndio, ananilipa vizuri. Twende kwa upande wa no. No, she doesn't pay me well. No, she doesn't pay me well. Kwa hiyo utaangalia ambapo does does imetumika na doesn't imetumika neno pay linabaki vile vile. Neno pay linabaki vile vile kama muungano ume, does umetumia kuuliza swali lakini pia doesn't umetumia kujibu. No, she doesn't pay me well. Yes, she pays me well. Yes, she pays me well. Yes, she pays me well. No, she doesn't pay me well. Kwa hiyo utakuwa makini kuangalia pale ambapo s au au es au mabadiliko yote yamefanyika na pale ambapo hayatakiwi kufanyika. Kitu kingine cha msingi cha kuzingatia ni kwamba don't ni kifupi cha do not. Kwa mfano I don't know you sikujui ni sawa na I do not know you. Kingi pia cha kuzingatia ni kwamba it doesn't ambayo umeiona hapa ni sawa sawa na does not. Kwa hiyo she doesn't pay me well ni sawa sawa na she does not pay me well. Maana ni ile ile doesn't ni mkusanyiko tu wa hayo maneno mawili kama ambavyo don't ni mkusanyiko wa hayo maneno mawili do na not do not. Twende mfano wetu wa pili. Hapa swala zima ni umakini tu kwa kila kitu ambacho tumekiona katika ile somo. Number two. Why does she want to run away from me? Why does she want to run away from me? Why does she want to run away from me? Ambayo inamaanisha kwa nini anataka kunikimbia? Au kwa nini anataka kukimbilia mbali na mimi? to run kukimbia away na maanisha mbali na Kuhu, to run away from me ni kunikimbia au kukimbia mbali na mimi why does she utaona hapa kuna does she tulikuwa tumezoea why do you why do you kwa hiyo pale do you does she does he does it ambayo inakuwa does it kwa majibu yake ni kama kawaida tu ambavyo tulikuwa tunaona E, yale ma, maswali ya do you yalivyokuwa najibika ndivyo hapa tunavyojibu tofauti tu ni pale kwenye do you tunacheza na does she na kwenye majibu yake na kwa raba she he it kwa mfano jibu letu hapa ni she wants to run away from you because she is afraid of you she wants to run away from you because she's afraid of you ambaye ana maana anataka kukukimbia kwa sababu anakuogopa. Kwa mfano, ninakuogopa hapa she is itakuwa I am because I am afraid of you au I am afraid of you. Ninataka kwa mfano I want to run away from you. Ninataka kukimbia because I am afraid of you kwa sababu ninakuogopa. Kwa hiyo kwenye I am inakuwa she is. Au kama ni hii itakuwa he is, kama ni it itakuwa it is. She wants kutoka kwenye i want Jibu lingine linaweza kuwa she doesn't want to run away from you she just wants to visit her friends she doesn't want to run away from you inayomaanisha hataki kukukimbia kama ambavyo ongeza kusema i don't want to run away from you sitaki kukukimbia she doesn't want to run away from you hataki kukukimbia yeye wa kike she just wants ambapo she wants anataka she just wants anataka tu to visit her friends kuwatembelea marafiki zake kwa hiyo she just wants to visit her friends anataka tu kuwatembelea marafiki zake she doesn't want to run away from you she just wants to visit her friends hataki kukukimbia anataka tu kuwatembelea marafiki zake 
Twende mfano wetu wa tatu ambao pia ni wa mwisho katika kipengele hiki cha does na doesn't kwa sababu kama do you na I don't ulielewa vizuri hivi vipengele na sentensi zake. Hapa tutacheza na mabadiliko madogo tu ya, ya ambayo tumeyaona katika hili somo. Number three, Where does she live? Where does she live? Where does he live? Where does he live? Inaanisha anaishi wapi yeye wa kiume? Kama angekuwa kike tungesema where does she live? Anaishi wapi? Utakumbuka where do you live inamaanisha unaishi wapi? Wewe unaishi wapi? Where do you live? Kwa hiyo do imetoka imekuwa does, you imetoka imekuwa he. Where does he live? Anaishi wapi au je? Anaishi wapi au je? Yeye anaishi wapi? Na jibu linaweza kwa mfano he lives. Koto na he lives. Badala ya I live, they live, we live. He lives. He lives in the United States. He lives in the United States ambayo inamaanisha anaishi Marekani. He lives in the United States. Au utakumbuka kama kule tulivyoona he live uh, the US kuongeza kusema he lives in the US kama ilivyo katika mabano. He lives in the US. He lives in the US. He lives in the US or he lives in the United States au unaweza kumalizia kabisa ukasema he lives in the United States of America anaishi Marekani au hii united pia unaweza kaitoa ukasema tu he lives in the states he lives in the states it bado vile vile itamaanisha kwamba anaishi Marekani baada ya kuona haya yote nitarudi tena mwanzo nisome haraka haraka hizi sentensi kwa vipengele ili ujikumbushe tu kwamba kwa nini hapa ilikuwa es kwa nini hapa imekuwa hivi na uone kama unakumbuka kwa nini tumeongeza hizo herufi au kwa nini pengine hatukuongeza labda tumeongeza es2 au pengine hatukuweka kabisa chochote kama tulivyoona kwenye does na doesn't number one, she goes to his office every day number two, he does business 24/7 three, she washes or she does the dishes every morning number four, he teaches english on youtube five, he fixes broken computers Six, it buzzes just like a bee. Seven, she misses a family so much. Kikipengere kingine, number one, she always cries for no reason. Two, he tries to do everything possible to help his son. Sometimes he prays for his son. Three, he flies to the U.S. twice a month. Number one, She loves you that's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns. Interudia number one. She loves you that's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns. Number two. He knows how to to play a guitar. He knows how to play a guitar. Three. It helps me a lot. Does she pay you well? Yes, she pays me well. No, she doesn't pay me well. Don't, so so na do not. Doesn't, so so na does not. Number two. Why does she want to run away from me? From me? Why does she want to run away from me? She wants to run away from you because she's afraid of you. She doesn't want to run away from you. She just wants to visit her friends. Three. Where does he live? He lives in the United States. Oh, he lives in the U.S. Hello, karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la 19, lesson 19. Na somo la 19 linatokana na somo la kumi ambalo tutaangalia vipengele vivyo kwa katika hilo somo la kumi na tunavibadilisha vipi kupata kile kitu ambacho tutakiona katika somo la 19. Na hapa kuna haya maneno refer to lesson 10. Refer to lesson 10 inamaanisha rejea somo la kumi. Rejea somo la kumi ambayo inamaanisha utakapoenda kwenye somo la kumi utakuta vitu vingi zaidi vya kukusaidia kuboresha kile utakachokuwa umejifunza katika somo hili. Ila tuanze moja kwa moja na sentensi ya kwanza tulionayo ili tuone kile utakachojifunza katika somo hili. Sentensi ya kwanza inasema I am sick au I am sick. I am sick inamaanisha ninaumwa. Kwa hiyo hapa tutaangalia namna ya kutoka I am kwenda kwenye they are you are we are he is she is 
na it is na maana yake lakini pia tutaona namna ya kuvitumia hivyo vipengele kwa upande wa kuuliza maswali na kadhalika lakini tuanze moja kwa moja tuone sasa kile tunachotakiwa kipata kupitia somo hili ambacho ni hiki hapa I am sick inamaanisha ninaumwa. Kwa hiyo mahali pote ambapo I am inakaa, mahali hapo inaweza ikaja they are you are we are he is she is it is. Kwa hiyo I am utaikumbuka na you are utaikumbuka. Kwa hiyo haya maneno mawili yanafanana kimatumizi na haya mengine ambayo nimesema they are he is she is it is alafu yatawakilisha watu tofauti pamoja na majina ya watu na vitu kwa mfano i am sick tayari unajua ni ninaumwa lakini they are happy they are happy inamaanisha wana furaha wana furaha au wana furahi they kwa sababu inamaanisha wao lakini haitakuwa they am itakuwa they are kwa hiyo am inatoka inaenda are unapoweka they they are happy wana furaha ambapo hapa they kwa sababu ni inawakilisha watu wengi ungeweza kusema kwa mfano teachers are happy walimu wana furaha students are happy wanafunzi wana furaha na kadhalika hapa you are busy you are busy na maanisha wewe uko busy au wewe umetingwa au wewe una kazi nyingi au wewe una shughuli nyingi you are busy you are busy ambapo sasa hapa kwenye you are busy unaweza ukatoa sasa ikawa raba they are busy i am busy na kadhalika ili ilete sasa tofauti ya maana kulingana na kile utakachokuwa unahitaji ukisema katika sentence husika number four, we are sorry we are sorry inamaanisha tunasikitika we are sorry tunasikitika au samahani au pole we are sorry lakini hiyo pole itakuwa inatokana na sisi we we are sorry ambapo utakumbuka kwamba hapa we are sorry unaweza kaibadilisha kawa i am sorry ninasikitika you are sorry unasikitika they are sorry wanasikitika na kadhalika lakini pia kitu kingine tunaweza kukiona kupitia hapa namba tano. he is ready he is ready he is ready na maanisha yuko tayari lakini aliyeko tayari ni wa kiume he is ready yuko tayari Angekuwa kike tungesema she is ready yuko tayari wa kike lakini pia unaweza kusema we are ready tuko tayari they are ready wako tayari kwa hiyo ni kucheza tuna hapa ilipo he is kwenda we are they are you are i am kitu kingine ni hapa number sita number sita she is tired she's tired She is tired ina maanisha amechoka. She is tired amechoka. Ambapo pia ongeza kusema he is tired amechoka. They are tired wamechoka na kadhalika. Kwa hiyo swala la msingi ni mazoezi yako binafsi na maneno mengine ambayo yanaendana na haya utayakuta katika lesson 10 somo la kumi. Number 7 it is ready. It is ready. Iko tayari. Kiko tayari. Liko tayari. Yuko tayari kama atakuwa ni mnyama. It is ready. It is ready iko tayari. Kwa hiyo they are ready utakumbuka wako tayari na kadhalika. Kwa hiyo swala so msingi ni mazoezi yako binafsi ili hivi vitu vyote uviweke kichwani utakapokutana na navyo mahali popote usianze kubabaika utakapokutana na we are they are I am na kadhalika. Twende katika kipengele kinachofuata hapa chini ambacho sasa hiki kipengele ni upande wa kuuliza maswali. Tuko tumezoea maswali ambayo ni are you are you kwa mfano hapa ingekuwa are you serious ambayo inamaanisha uko serious au unamaanisha lakini unaona kwamba ile are you you ingekaa hapa kwa hiyo are inakuja hapa kwa sababu they inaenda na are kama utakumbuka kwa hiyo ilikuwa ni, ni, ni mabadiliko tu ya mpangilio kwamba you are serious sio swali inamaanisha you are serious unamaanisha au uko serious inapokuja swali you inata are inatangulia you inafuata kwa hiyo kwa sababu they are serious inamaanisha wako serious. Are inatangulia they inafuata unapouliza swali afu kumwisho unaishana alama ya kuuliza. Kwa are they serious? Are they serious? Wanamaanisha au je wanamaanisha? Au je wako serious kama inavyosema kwa Kiswahili bila kutafsiri neno serious. Kwa majibu yake anakuwa vile vile yes na no. Japo itabadilika baada kwa yes they are 
yes you are no you are not y yes i am no i am not ingekuwa are you serious majibu ingekuwa yes i am serious no i am not serious lakini kwa they majibu yake atabeba they ile ile kwa sababu ni sana kusema kwa Kiswahili wako serious ndio wako serious lakini unaposema uko serious utasema ndio niko serious au hapana siko serious kwa are they serious yes they are serious yes they are serious ambayo inamaanisha ndio wako serious au ndio wanamaanisha no they are not serious hapana hawako serious kwa utakumbuka i am ilikuwa inaenda na not i am not are you serious yes i am serious no i am not serious kwa hiyo pale ambapo ilikuwa inakaa i am ambapo ndio imekaa they are not itakaa pale pale ambapo ilikuwa inakaa ikifuatana na i am kwa they are not they are not serious ingekuwa ni he he is not serious she she is not serious you you are not serious kwa hiyo ni hapa tu haya maneno mawili yanakaa nafasi ya you are au i am alafu inabadilisha maana tu kutoka kwenye siko kwenda kwenye hawako twende kipengele kinachofuata ambacho ni namba tisa. nacho ni swali pia ambalo ni hili hapa namba tisa. is he sad is he sad inamaanisha ana huzuni is he sad ana huzuni majibu ni yes he is sad ndio ana huzuni yes he is sad ana huzuni hapo utakumbuka are you sad una huzuni yes i am sad no i am not sad lakini kwa he inaenda na is kwa hiyo ndio sababu unaona is imetangulia badala ya are is he sad yes he is sad no he is not sad no he is not sad hapana hana huzuni hapana hana huzuni ambapo kitu cha kuzingatia kama ambapo kwenye they ni kwa nimekutolea mfano wa teachers kwa pala hata pale kwenye are they serious ungeweza kusema are teachers serious are people serious na kadhalika kwa hiyo hii pia unaweza kaweka jina la mtu kwa mfano is john sad is john sad john ana huzuni yes he is sad ndio ana huzuni kwa hiyo hapa hii ingewakilisha tu john kwa sababu john ni wa kiume lakini angekuwa wa kike tungesema is she sad ana huzuni wa kike ambapo ongeza kusema laba, is mariam sad mariam ana huzuni yes she is sad no she is not sad twende mfano namba kumi. ambao na wenyewe pia ni katika huko katika mfumo wa swali namba 10 ambapo utakumbuka kuna i am kwa hiyo kwenye i am unapotaka kuuliza swali kwa kujiulizia wewe mwenyewe ya yeah, hapa m itatangulia itafuatiwa na i am i sick am i sick au am i sick am i sick am i sick inamaanisha je ninaumwa au je mimi ninaumwa kwa mfano labda inaweza kutokea mahali ambapo unataka umulize mtu akuthibitishie kama unaumwa au hauumwi labda nakwambia usije usije hatutaki wagonjwa afu kauliza je ninaumwa au je mimi ninaumwa Am I sick? Am I sick? Unaweza kujibiwa yes, you are sick. Ndio unaumwa. Yes, you are sick. No, you are not sick. Hapana hauumwi. Am I sick? Yes, you are sick. No, you are not sick. Ambapo hapa am I inaweza kuja is he? Are you? Are they? Are we? Na kadhalika kwa mfano are we sick? Tunaumwa. Yes we are sick no we are not sick kama tutajibia sisi wenyewe ndio tunaumwa au hapana hatuumwi lakini kama anatujibia mtu mwingine atatuambia at, yes you are sick ndio mnaumwa no you are not sick hapana hamuumwi tumalize na hivi vipengele viwili ambavyo ni 11 na 12 11 na she is so hungry she is so hungry utakumbuka i am so hungry na maanisha nina njaa sana kwa hiyo vile vile tu utatoa i am utaweka she is ambayo itakuwa ana njaa sana wa kike she is so hungry ambapo she unaweza kutoa kaweka majina kwa mfano ukasema tu hata my friend is so hungry rafiki yangu ana njaa sana labda ukasema janet is so hungry janet ana njaa sana 
lakini pia unaweza katika sentence number 12 number 12 are they very tired are they very tired je wamechoka sana au wamechoka sana are they very tired ambapo they unaweza katoa kaweka what kwa mfano are people very tired watu wamechoka sana lakini unaona hapa kuna very inatumika vile vile kama ambavyo ilikuwa inatumika kwenye i am na you are are you very tired umechoka sana yes i'm very tired no i am not very tired she's so hungry ambapo ukitaka kuuliza swali itakuwa is she so hungry is she so hungry ananja sana yes she is so hungry no she is not so hungry janet ananja sana is janet so hungry yes janet is so hungry no janet is not so hungry au yes janet yes she is so hungry au no she is not so hungry kwa sababu unajua janet ni jina la kike kwa hiyo kwenye jibu unaweza usirudie janet ukasema she kama ambavyo jina la kiume utaachana na hilo jina la kiume kwenye jibu utasema he baada ya kuona hivi vipengele vyote nadhani angalau utakuwa umepata mwanga wa vile ambavyo somo la kumi unaweza kalitumia kwa upana zaidi kupitia ongezeko la we they he she na it kutoka kwenye i na you peke yake ambazo tuliziona katika somo la kumi. Asa nataka nifanye marudio ya kusoma tu sentences zote kwa Kiingereza alafu uone kama umepata kile ambacho nilikuwa nakisema kwa usahihi au kwa uhakika. Tuanze number 1 I am sick. Number 2 They are happy. 3 You are busy. 4 We are sorry. 5 He is ready. 6 She is tired. 7 It is ready. 8 Are they serious? Majibu yes they are serious no they are not serious Number 9 is he sad Majibu au answers yes he is sad no he is not sad 10 am i sick answers yes you are sick no you are not sick 11 she is so hungry 12 are they very tired Hello, karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la 20, lesson 20. Na katika lesson 20 tutaona marejeo ya somo la 13 lakini tukiwa tunatumia I, you, we, they, he, she pamoja na it. Lakini pia tutaona namna ambavyo unaweza kutumia na majina ya watu pia. Kwa upande wa sentences za kawaida, sentences za kukanusha na kuuliza na kujibu swali kutakuwa na jumla ya sentence kumi ambapo sentensi ya kuanzia ya nane mpaka ya kumi ni maswali na majibu ila ya kwanza mpaka ya saba ni sentensi za kawaida sasa tuangalie kitu tunachotakiwa kifanya katika somo hili kuna haya maneno hapa ambayo nasema refer to lesson 13 refer to lesson 13 inamaanisha rejea somo la 13 tuanze na mfano wa kwanza ambao ni huu hapa I can help you I can help you inamaanisha ninaweza kukusaidia kwa hili neno ni can au can kwa matamshi tofauti kwa hiyo ukisikia I can au I can ujue ni haya hapa mawili I na can au can help you I can help you inamaanisha ninaweza kukusaidia kwa hiyo tutaangalia namna ambavyo I itabadilishana na you itabadilishana na hii na we na they na she na it lakini katika sentence ya pili inasema you can tell me anything you can tell me anything inamaanisha unaweza kuniambia chochote kwa hiyo tutaangalia kwamba i inaenda na can you inaenda na can bila mabadiliko yoyote kwa hiyo maana yake vile ambavyo can inatumika pamoja na i ndivyo itakavyotumika pamoja na you bila badiliko lolote i can help you au unaweza kusema you can help me unaweza kunisaidia mimi i can help you unaweza kusaidia wewe you can help me unaweza kunisaidia mimi you can tell me anything you can tell me anything inamaanisha unaweza kuniambia chochote hapa ukiweka i hapa ukaweka you inakuwa i can tell you anything kwa hiyo unaona kwamba i na you zimetumika vile vile twende katika mfano wa tatu na kuendelea kwanza mfano wa tatu mpaka mfano wa saba tuangalie hapa inavyokuwa pia number three he can speak english 
he can speak english he can speak english na maanisha anaweza kuzungumza kiingereza lakini hii ni kwa sababu hii itakuwa ni inawakilisha wa kiume he can speak english kwa mfano unaweza kusema john can speak english unapotoa jina my friend can speak english our teacher can speak english na kadhalika kwa hiyo tumeona kwamba i you na he zinatumia can bila mabadiliko yoyote kwa hiyo maana i you zinatumia can hii inatumia can ambapo unajua kwamba kile kinachofanyika kwa hii ndicho kitakachofanyika kwa she pamoja na it na pia kila ambacho kinatumika kwa you utajua kwamba hicho ndicho kitakachofanyika kwa we pamoja na they kwa hiyo tunaona kwamba kumbe you can i can he can she can it can we can they can kwa hiyo inamaanisha kwamba kwa upande wa matumizi ya can can't hazina mabadiliko kwa viwakilishi vyote hivi tunavyoviona hapa i you we they he she it kwa hiyo ni rahisi zaidi kulinganisha labda na masomo mengine ambapo tulikuwa tunaona kwamba kwenye hii na it kuna mabadiliko yanatokea kwa hiyo tuendelee na example 4 example 4 she can cook for you she can cook for you ina maanisha anaweza kapika kwa ajili yako au kwa namna nyingine anaweza kukupikia she can cook for you she can cook for you kwa hiyo unaweza kuongeza maelezo mengine yoyote katika hizi sentence unazoziona huu ni mfano tu wa kukuonesha vile ambavyo hapa panatakiwa kuwa lakini maelezo ya mbele unaweza kaweka kulingana na uhitaji wako. Kwa she can cook for you. Kwa mfano unaweza kusema she can cook rice for you. She can cook anything for you. Anaweza kapika wali kwa ajili yako. She can cook rice for you. Anaweza kapika chochote kwa ajili yako. She can cook anything for you. Na kadhalika. Lakini hapa she kumbuka ni uhakike. Kwa unaweza kaweka jina la mwanamke au msichana labda kwa kusema Jane can cook for you. Jane can cook for you. Deborah can cook for you. Amina can cook for you na kadhalika au kasema raba my mother can cook for you na kadhalika lakini pia twende sentence nyingine ambayo hapa number 5 it can make you money it can make you money ambayo ina maana inaweza ikakutengenezea pesa it can make you money inaweza ikakutengenezea pesa au inaweza ikakupatia pesa it can make you money au kwa mfano unaweza kusema a business can make you money biashara inaweza ikakutengenezea pesa a business can make you money. Ambapo unaweza kusema hapa hapa pia kwenye money ukongeza hapa a lot of money it can make you a lot of money na kadhalika. Au labda it can give you peace inaweza kukupa amani au linaweza kukupa amani kinaweza kukupa amani hapa na kadhalika. Au it can help you inaweza kusaidia linaweza kusaidia na kadhalika. Au unaweza kusema hapa kwenye it kwa sababu ni vitu pamoja na wanyama sasa tukisema kwa mfano this advice can help you ushauri huu unaweza kukusaidia kama hautaamua kutumia it utaje kitu husika unaweza kufanya mazoezi binafsi ili kupata vitu vingi vya kusemea kwa viwakilishi tofauti tofauti kama ambavyo tunaviona hapa twende number 6 we can't come today we can't come today ina maanisha hatuwezi kuja leo we can't come today utakumbuka kwa mfano i can't help you siwezi kukusaidia you can't go now hauwezi kwenda sasa hivi we can't come today hatuwezi kuja leo ambapo sasa tunaona kwamba kwenye we inatumia can kama ambavyo tulikuwa tunaona kwenye i katika somo la 13 lesson 13 kwa hiyo hakuna mabadiliko yote kwenye sentence za kawaida kama he can you can lakini pia hata kwenye kukanusha we can't they can't ndivyo ambavyo utafanya she can't he can't amina can't john can't na kadhalika tumalizie na hii hapa ya saba kwa kipande hiki <coughs> kumbuka tu hii hapa we can't come today hatuwezi kuja leo number 7 they can't buy this home they can they can't or they can't buy this home they can't buy this home na maanisha hawezi kununua nyumba hii ambayo ni kwa ajili ya makazi ukisema home ni nyumba lakini kwa ajili ya makazi. Kwa hiyo hawawezi kununua, ni sana kusema hawawezi wakanunua makazi yao. Japo makazi yana neno lingine ambalo ni residence lakini home pia inatumika kuonyesha nyumba kwa ajili ya makazi. Kwa hiyo they can't buy this home. Hawawezi kununua nyumba hii. Hapa ambapo I can't buy ingekuwa sawa he can't buy ingekuwa sawa she can't buy John can't buy Amina can't buy na kadhalika 
twende katika kipengele kinachofuata ambacho ni hii hapa maswali na majibu tukianza na number 8 number 8 hii hapa inasema can they visit us today today can they visit us today inayomaanisha wanaweza kututembelea leo they wow can they visit us today wanaweza kututembelea leo au je wanaweza kututembelea leo lakini pia ukitaka kuitafsiri hata hapa as itakuwa can they visit us, visit us today w je wanaweza kututembelea sisi leo ambapo sasa hapa they unaweza kuweka kwa mfano majina kwa mfano can teachers visit us today je walimu wanaweza kututembelea sisi leo can doctors visit us today je madaktari wanaweza kututembelea sisi leo na kadhalika utafanya kwa hiyo mazoezi ya kucheza na hapa lakini pia hapa they unaweza kuitoa na hapa as ukaitoa kwa mfano ukasema can i visit you today can i visit you today je mimi ninaweza kukutembelea wewe leo kwa hiyo hapa they umetoa ukaweka i lakini hapa as ukaitoa ukaweka you can i visit you today na mabadiliko mengine unayoweza kuyafanya kwa mazoezi yako binafsi lakini kwa swali hili majibu ni haya hapa yes they can visit us today yes they can visit us today ndio wanaweza kututembelea leo no they can't visit us today no they can't visit us today hapana hawawezi kututembelea leo Ukiona inakuchanganya hii hapa maswali na majibu rudi kwenye somo la somo la 13 utapata vizuri kabisa namna ya kuuliza swali na kujibu kwa kutumia ken. Lakini pia kumbuka kwa namna fupi ya kujibu ungeweza kusema yes they can no they can't ambayo ingefikisha ujumbe tu ndio wanaweza hapana hawawezi. Yes they can ndio wanaweza no they can't hapana hawawezi. Lakini kwa kwa ajili ya kufanya mazoezi Jizoezi tu kujibu kwa kutumia maneno yote ambayo yanakuwa katika swali ili ikupe mazoezi ya kuyatamka na lakini pia kujua kuweza kuwa kuchanganua nani maneno yote ambayo katika sentensi kuyachanganua kuweza kuyatumia kwenye majibu kwa usahihi Twende katika mfano unaofuata ambao ni mfano namba 9 mfano namba 9 example 9 Number nine. Can he speak English? Can he speak English? Anaweza kuzungumza Kiingereza au je anaweza kuzungumza Kiingereza lakini huyu anaweza hii ni wa kiume. Ambapo hapa ongeza kusema can John speak English? Can John speak English? Je John anaweza kuzungumza Kiingereza? Can your brother speak English? Je kaka yako anaweza kuzungumza Kiingereza? Mazoezi yako binafsi ya kutoa hapa hii na kuweka kitu kingine kulingana na mahitaji yako. Tuenda kwenye majibu. Yes, he can speak English. Yes, he can speak English. Ndio anaweza kuzungumza Kiingereza. No, he can't speak English. No, he can't speak English. Hapana hawezi kuzungumza Kiingereza. Kwa hiyo tunaona kama vile ambavyo vilikuwa can you inajibiwa kwa yes, I can, no, I can't. Ndivyo ambavyo he, she, it, we, you, they zitajibiwa vile vile kulingana na viwakilishi vyake lakini vikitumia can kama kawaida na can't kwenye upande wa kukataa ambapo hapa can John speak English majibu yake yangekuwa haya haya yes he can ndio anaweza yeye wa kiume labda kama ukiamua kutumia jina lake kwenye kujibu ni utasema yes John can speak English no John can't speak English lakini hakuna haja kwa sababu hii inatosha kumwakilisha yule ambaye tayari ametajwa kwenye swali wa kiume kama ni wakike can Amina speak English? Yes, she can speak English. No, she can't speak English. Twende kwenye mfano mwingine ambao ni mfano wa mwisho, mfano wa kumi. Example 10, example 10. What can she do for you? What can she do for you? What can she do for you? Anaweza kukufanyia nini? Au anaweza kufanya nini kwa ajili yako? Lakini anaweza kufanya ni wakike what can she do for you ambapo she ukitoa utakumbuka unaweza kuweka jina la kike kwa mfano what can amina do for you what what can amina do for you amina anaweza kufanya nini kwa ajili yako majibu yake inaweza kuwa kwa mfano she can just give me some money for my treatment she can just give me some money for my treatment she can 
ukitoa just ukisema she can give me inamaanisha anaweza kunipa lakini she can just give me she can just give me she can just give me inamaanisha anaweza kunipa tu ukiongeza na hii just she can just give me anaweza kunipa tu some money pesa kiasi au baadhi ya pesa for kwa ajili ya my treatment inamaanisha matibabu yangu my treatment she can just give me some money for my treatment anaweza tu kunipa pesa kiasi kwa ajili ya matibabu yangu anaweza kunipa baadhi ya pesa kwa ajili ya matibabu yangu she can just give me some money for my treatment ambapo hapa hata kwa matumizi mengine unaweza kusema amina can just give me some money for my treatment or she can just give you some money for your treatment na kadhalika kwa mabadiliko mengine yote utayafanya kwa mazoezi binafsi lakini pia tunako kwamba hata ukitumia what inabaki vile vile kama vile what can you do unaweza kufanya nini what can she inakaa vile vile tu mabadiliko ni hapa kwenye ambapo ilikuwa kwenye you ilipokuwa you kwenye somo la 13 hapa kuna she na viwakilishi vingine what can we what can you na kadhalika sasa kuanzia mwanzo mpaka mwisho na ikiwa kuna kitu chochote hujakielewa vizuri utaandika kwenye sehemu ya maoni ili labda ni nikusaidie kuelewa nikusaidie kukuelewesha zaidi kupitia kwenye sehemu hiyo ya maoni nitaanza mwanzo mpaka mwisho sentence hizi hapa kwa Kiingereza tu ili kukusaidia kukumbuka na kuona kama umeweza kutambua ile tofauti wapi unaweza kaongeza majina na kadhalika kwa kutumia hili somo number 1 i can help you 2 You can tell me anything. Three, He can speak English. Four, She can cook for you. Five, It can make you money. Six, We can't come today. Seven, They they can't buy this home. Eight, Can they visit us today? Yes, They can visit us today. No, They can't visit us today. Number nine, Can he speak English? Yes, he can speak English. No, he can't speak English. 10. What can she do for you? What can she do for you? She can just give me some money for my treatment. Ikiwa unahitaji kupata somo lingine leo katika mfululizo wa masomo ya Kiingereza cha kuongea, utaenda YouTube sehemu ya kutafuta video, kisha utaandika kwa mfano somo la kwanza Kiingereza cha kuongea. Ikiwa unatafuta somo la kwanza lakini kwa mfano kama unataka somo la kumi utaandika somo la kumi Kiingereza cha kuongea na kadhalika kwa kuna badilisha ile namba ya somo tu lakini maneno yote unatumia hayo hayo ili kupata somo tofauti.